complicated. This is a weekly D&D podcast that we do. Um, a lot of fun. I just realized I didn't put on my DM ring. That's awkward. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, if you're new to the channel and don't really know what D&D is, is or what is, you know, what happens here, we... Uh, it's a bunch of us, just nerdy people. We sit around, we go on this fantastic fantasy adventure, we fight creatures, we fight monsters, use magic, place bets, fight each other. It's a lot of fun. Um, so if you missed uh, last week um, on the riot sessions, the group of intrepid adventurers, that are, which are the people that you see us around, see around us, we have Jessica, who's currently uh, pl- played by Ramsbug. You have Dryden, who's played by I'm the Blue Ranger. Uh, you have Tonf, the halfling um, ranger, who's currently played by Shadowcon. Uh, you have Brontor, the human blood hunter, who's played by the one, the only Cody Bedrock. And you have... Geth, the half-elven gunslinger, who is played by Zach, who's down on the opposite corner of me. Um, and I'm Shadowhack. I'm your illustrious DM. I'm the person who gets to help tell the story and kind of set the world that these guys get to run around and play in. Um, last week, the group of intrepid adventurers, uh, upon arriving in the town of Nightstone, set within the hills of uh, of Faerun, um, and just uh, just a little inward of on the Sword Coast, they ventured out from this ventured out from this town um, after finding it has been set upon by a lot of pretty angry giants um, who threw boulders uh, larger than most of our heroes um, down onto the town, pretty much crushing most of the town itself. Um, they set out. Uh, they set out to find where the villagers went uh, after gaining some information and finding that it's very possible that they had fled into the hills just north of the town of Nightstone and just south of the forest of the of Ardeep. Um, it is uh, upon arriving at the to the hills, they found one in particular that actually had a large cave opening in it. In it, uh, through the use of some beast sense and birds flying and dying through the use of some of that they discovered a network of tunnels and a large cavern that was in one of the hills um within this within this set of hill uh this hill range uh they um they ended up going down through a uh, through a chimney actually at the very top of the hill um, that led down kind of into the back portion of this cavern of this cavern. And uh, as as they dug and fought or as they followed the cavern through and continued walking, um, walking through it and exploring it, they found a uh, stalagmite forest where there appeared to be uh, two trolls, uh, large, massive, uh, nine to ten feet tall uh, humanoid entities. Um, that were kind of li- that were living there and protecting this protecting this area. Um, one was taking a bath in mud. Bud, mud was taking a bath in mud. The other one was eating or cooking some form of food um, in the actual in their hovel that they called a home. Um, upon uh, interfering with the trolls and the goblins who lived in this cave's kind of day to day life. Um, as well as looking around for the villagers that have been missing, uh, the goblins and the trolls set upon our group of adventurers and through the use of much sword play, much axe play, some gunshot, some crazy gunshots, um, as well as, as well as some just wonderfully placed arrows, uh, the group was able to succeed in killing off all the foes before them chopping off the dick of a giant giant ogre troll thing it was long um and uh, <laughs> it and, was long <laughs> <laughs> i've seen bigger it was only 10 feet <laughs> um they they uh they uh ended up searching around the remainder of the cave and found a small little cache of uh, of 
of hidden treasure of some form. Uh, they found some gold pieces, silver pieces, um, as well as a scroll that had some that has some form of arcane and magic energy to it, although they're not sure what it does. And they have a uh, and and a box that has um, the symbol of a broken a broken circle on top of it, as well as these very intricate arcane. Um, runes that are very finely painted along the outside. They're just constantly shifting and moving and changing um, around the box, seemingly with no end. Um, uh, Jessica realizing, though, that that, circle, that broken circle is also a, another very um, distant symbol of her deity, uh, Bahamut, um, the Platinum Dragon. Uh, she decided to hold on to that for a little bit for herself, um, as well as kind of divvying up the rest of the rest of the loot amongst the group um upon uh, upon pushing farther into the cavern they found the villagers um and succeeded in helping them escape and get begin the trek home back to their ruined village of nightstone um the villagers also informed the villagers informed them that there also was uh in this cave the main leader of the goblin uh force who they've are uh the force which they've pretty much already eviscerated named Hark. Uh, and that they have not quite found Hark or know where he is at at this point. Um, after the le- pushing the villagers uh, and telling them to head on back to safety in their homes, they remained at the cave in order to deal with this goblin boss leader. It is here that we pick up this evening. So, as you as you have uh, as you all have entered um, and stay are staying in the uh, in the cavern, what would you like to do? Uh, did ahead. we decide we're going to split up a little bit, which is probably not a good idea. Was there a backstory? <laughs> oh, the fight, the fight as well. Yes, that one other little thing. Oh my uh, God. Throughout part of this, uh, oh, throughout part of <laughs> throughout part I'm of the this, only one that remembers, and I wasn't even a part. You of weren't it. even a part of it. <laughs> yeah. Throughout part of this exchange, um, our human blood hunter Brontor and our half organ barbarian decided to get into a little bit of a scrap while they were waiting and waiting for the villagers to a get out of the cave. Match, if you will, get out of the cave. Just keep their just keep their uh, just keep their um, skills sharp. Well, basically, in short, so what in, happened? I don't in, even know what happened. In a kind of guy banter fashion, uh, <laughs> as Jessica continued talking about uh, Bahamut, am I saying that right? Yes. I I decided that if I heard bah- uh, the name Bahamut one more time, I would remove <laughs> the member of one Brontor in order to upset <laughs> one Jessica. <laughs> And Brontor didn't I take too kindly to this. <laughs> I, I also realized in the beginning of this that I, for some reason, remove a lot of members. Uh, <laughs> but I'm obsessed with six. A little bit. <laughs> but uh, basically, we ended up in a little bit of a sparring match. And uh, we did it. We, we, we rolled and everything went by all the rules. And I don't know. What do you think, Cody? How, how'd it go? Uh, it came down to the wire there. It did the actually end. come down to the uh, wire. Yeah, I, I I got in a good strike that, that brought him down quite a quite a bit, but in the end, uh, the great axe got me. The the thing that's worth noting is that I started off so strong and I was crushing him, and then he rolls his d10 with uh, with his modifiers, nails the perfect ten just to hit and or maximum and then, damage maximum damage and then roll or, yeah and then roll yeah he rolls that for damage and rolls to hit because we forgot about that rolls to hit and rolls a natural 20 so he rolls a 10 and a 20 and took <laughs> takes me down was it 19 hp on one swing yeah. oh, and all yeah, he came God. he came down to about 10 or 11 hit points you were at 14 like and i was making fun of you for being at 14 and you hit me with that and put me at 14 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. and then you so y'all have what HP right now? Because we still have some exploring. This to was do. a sparring oh, this match. Was off Thank campaign. you. This was just a. This is not st- canon. Yeah. <laughs> this is like a friendly Pokemon bout. I believe that's up to nobody the DM. really gets hurt. Nobody has to go to the Pokemon Center. No, the DM <laughs> wanted to make it canon, and we said no. This was just for fun. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 
If it was if it was canon, we would both be he would be uh, needing health right now, and I would be very close to that point. <laughs> but that would be a good thing for Brontor because he likes near death experiences. So so amidst amidst the <laughs> amidst the battle and the combat that Brontor and Dryden decided to do, they ended up uh, basically foregoing most of their foregoing the use of most of their weapons and pretty much just went full on fisticuffs uh, was, throughout throughout the entire yeah. throughout the entire battle Dryden had the pretty distinct upper hand being a 7 8 foot tall half orc um, whereas Brontor being the more semi agile human was able to like, duck dodge and able to actually f- find some of the weak points um, while not dealing any permanent damage Definitely left some good bruises, and by the end of it, both of them came away fairly with with some new bruises and some new stories to tell. Um, it is, but it was, but it, it was great. To pick up. It it's going to pick up this evening. I think it was a nice way to bridge the week. Honestly, all of a sudden we're playing a little <laughs> bit of D and D. It's like having a mobile <laughs> game. <laughs> um, were we going to split up and explore or stick together? Because I'm down to one spell. I'm not feeling I'm, very healthy. Yeah, right I'm now. not. I'm, I'm not big on splitting the party. I Y'all think if go we go somewhere, first? we should all do it in the same. Fashion. I mean, I can go with you, Brontor, if you want to. I don't mind that at all. <laughs> no one's <laughs> changing. Brontor had a good week. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess these fools need me though, so I'll I'll stick with them. Let's go north. Are you coming with us, Brontor? All right, so you all head uh, to the north uh, and begin walking up that um, walking up the the pathway that leads northward. Um, about uh, 20, 20 feet in, uh, you find very quickly um, that uh, as you're as you're walking, um, who's t- who's taking the lead at this point? I'm always behind. Um, I can scouting a little anything. bit ahead. I can yeah, get up front too. Well, we got, you guys remember it's dark. Driving <laughs> get. Oh yeah. Uh, all right. right. I, I light. Should... I light a rock. Rock for you. All right. Well, well, we Come have. On. We can see it in the dark. <laughs> I light a rock for top. Hey, I can see. I know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So as the uh, as the light spills out from the rock and continues on, you can all see. Um, just a few feet in front of you, as you have, uh, as you guys have been, wa- as you have been walking and having this conversation, uh, about five, about five feet in front of you is this large, twenty to thirty foot wide, just massive ca- um, crevasse that just sinks down into the ground. Uh, you kind of bend over, look down, let the light shine down into the cavern, and the light just pours in, and you don't see any. Don't see any semblance of a bottom, unfortunately. Tom, can you drop the light in there so you see how long it takes to get get down there? I uh, chuck the ru- the the light rock down into the chasm. All right. So you take the rock. You see it disappear. It just drops and drops and drops. I think we found the end of the world, guys. Until. The light until the light spell actually, Jessica. You feel the light spell release, and you see the light flicker out. That's really far, guys. Wow. How far mm-hmm. does your light spell work from? Like sixty feet. Oh, so it's Something deep. Like that. Something like that. So I'll turn. I think we should I turn, turn back. To drive should go back out. south. Yep. Let's try this uh, side corridor. I was going to say, I turned to dry and I said, I bet you can't reach the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> no bets right now, guys. We're not, we're not very healthy dry, right now. Dryden starts tying a rope around Tom's waist. <laughs> 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 I don't have a rope. I'm just kidding. That's a lie. You actually do have a rope in your adventures. Back, back. Yeah, you oh. do have a rope. Oh, I, I, I personally don't have the rope. So. <laughs> All right, guys. Let's try this uh, side quarter. Which right. is, okay. Down... down. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, over there to the right. All right. All right, so you head over in that direction. Just a reminder, we're looking for either Hark or something to help us break this small wooden box puzzle 
or help us with the scroll problem. The yeah. scroll problem. <laughs> uh, question, well, dungeon, dungeon Master, question. Yes, sir. Uh, when I have my Crimson Rite on my um, Warhammer, does that give any light at all? Um, Not enough to do, not enough for like dim light or anything, but... Oh, just like five five feet or so? If that. Like, it's, okay. it's, it's kind of just more of a slight glow. Like, Is my not... light not good enough for you? No, 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 I was just wondering in case we ever come across to where we need it. I, I just Your light only, is fantastic. Oh, my gosh. Jessica. My only fear with all right. lighting all these rocks is if there's something lurking, we don't want it to alert it immediately to our presence where me and Geth might be able to see it before it sees us. That's, That's my only concern with that sometimes. Well, maybe someone's afraid of the dark, so you got to oh. be a little more sensitive than that, Dryan. Yeah, I, I, I apologize. I apologize. We'll put our life at risk for someone who has fears. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> All right, I, I have the HP to deal with it, so. <laughs> I turn off Crimson Right. All right. And then fashion it to the ba my back. Okay. So. All right. Is there something on this corner to the uh, south? No. It's just a, another little dead event. So. Oh, okay. Right. Um, so you guys walk. You guys walk, continue walking down this corridor. <clears throat> um, you uh, may, uh, you walk for probably a good solid five ten minutes. Um, takes you a little longer to get down in that area than you're expecting to, but you do. Uh, as you're walking, you do find that it's going down at a slight decline. Um, let's see here. Um, as you uh, as you walk as you continue to walk as you continue to walk, you find that uh, there are stalagmites and stalactites that are starting to jut up and out or up out of the uh, out of the floor a little bit. Um, uh, everyone, go ahead and make a perception check. Uh oh. 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 Eleven. Oof. All right. Sixteen. I take it. Seven. 20. Oof. <clears throat> nice. Uh, 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 Brontor, make it with disadvantage because it is dark. Okay. See? And Fuck you it, guys. Oh, I rolled the same thing. Two 17s. Damn, son. Okay. So, uh, Brontor, oh, Brontor and um, Dryden, as as you're walking as you're walking along, uh, Brontor, you feel, as, as you're walking, you feel your foot actually kind of catch in, in something and you like once um, and you're like oh that's that's kind of odd that's okay keep walking for a little bit more and then you, you all of a sudden feel your foot once your foot catch and kind of more like a slight divot um, in the ground you bend down and as you feel the divot you find that it's very smooth it's not a it's not like a rough surface it's not what you'd expect the floor of a cave to feel it doesn't feel wet doesn't feel slimy it's um it's a very, uh, it's a very smooth little divot, and uh, kind of um, sprawling out with your hands a little bit more. You find a bunch of these divots all along the floor in this area that you're kind of walking. Dryden, as you're walking, and kind of you, you're you with your dark vision, you notice the same thing on the floor, and you manage to just kind of avoid them, uh, where like and just kind of step where you see the ground still level and very um uh and and like flat uh but you also notice that the that these kind of same pot marks are along the sides of the wall as well hmm. <laughs> so they're, they're what, do you, what, do you, what do they look like dryden so they're that's a good question so they're they're, they're kind of like divots on the walls kind of like um maybe the surface of coral or something uh sort of um it, 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 it looks more like something has, like, it, it looks like like the rock face is still there. Um, it just looks like that portion of the rock, the, where like these divots are, has been melted away. Melted <laughs> away. Um. Mm. All right. Uh. So, gang, I don't know what's going on here, but by the the smoothness and the kind of almost watery bumping effect. It looks like something very hot came through here. It, it, almost a fire-like. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Um, can we, Does it bleed? Can we do a general perspective? Uh, <laughs> can I go ahead and light something? I'm going to light one of the rocks and uh, can I do a general perception check? 
Or yeah. Have we just done? Okay. Uh, the general perception check was kind of what you just did. Um, um, but like, I, I mean, but you still light up one of the rocks. I'll, yeah, I want to inspect the rocks. Investigation. You still light up one of the rocks, and like you, you now all okay. can see these very, very simple. Thank you. These divots all around you. Um, um, with Rams being an expert in blowing flames and whatnot, can she tell that there's a, a a large amount of heat that's been going through these caverns? I'm sorry, who? Oh, I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> Jessica. With Jessica knowing how to use heat <laughs> and seeing uh, the effects. Um, I mean, we all can kind of tell that heat's been through here. Okay. Is it is it on the ceilings as well? Um. It is on the ceilings as well. Uh, Jessica, you as a dragonborn and having used and blown fire from your mouth a lot, um, you know that when you breathe fire and when things melt, there is normally some form of um, burn marks around. At all of these holes and divots, you don't see any burn marks. This is really odd, guys. Um, this isn't natural. Um, um, I'm guessing not. I'm guessing not flames. I'm guessing heated, like other types of heat, heated air or like lava. Or like under the ground itself is just warm here. So Geth wanted to know if it bleeds. So I take my ogre canine, which I just ripped out of the ogre's mouth, and I stab it into the wall just to see if it bleeds. You stab the, <laughs> you, you just. Ting! <laughs> well, it hits. A few rocks go down the ground, but nothing really. No blood. You pull it back, lick it a little bit. No blood. Yes, it doesn't <laughs> bleed. I, I know well, you. They, I, I know they, you're they hoping, like, but. Well, maybe they, 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 they these, serve please. any like immediate hindrance to us now that we can see him, right? All we can do is, I think, move forward. Yeah, uh, we, we can just get. I would just say go for it. Or you guys just, can remember that we could just leave. We could just kind of step back, maybe take a short rest. Well, there's, there's a short, guy we can in do here a short. that we haven't. It's true. There's, but, there's four uh, souls well, out there that we need to find. I know, I know he's got extremely hot stuff. <laughs> I'll, I'll, for as uh, Geth, Geth, as you're looking forward, you can see a small cavern that opens up. Um... And a small little uh, with a with a bunch of stalagmites jutting up through, um, like around and one in the very center of it. The stalagmite that is jutting up from the very center has a bunch of these pop marks all around it, like all over it. Just like not even spider webbing, just like it looks like Swiss cheese to an extent. Um, Guys, could this be acid? Ooh, I, I think it would have the same effect. And that's way more scary. I could do flames. I can't pass it. I have no idea. I, I haven't ever seen this before. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think I've seen this before. I, I've, I've traveled a lot. Have I seen anything like this before? Make a... History. Just make a history check. Yeah, 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 make a history check. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> You, you're, you're, uh, you know that when things like this melt and burn, that normally hurts your skin. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that feels, pretty much that feels goes, not good. That goes hand in hand with my negative one wisdom and intelligence modifiers. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so perceptive. Um, I guess we keep going forward. Would you guys rather fall back and get a rest? Um, I think we're this? committed at this point. I think a rest uh, is our, a dangerous well, precedent in this cave. This is the point of no return. Um, I think it's either go or no go. Yep. This I agree. Well, we got two other caverns Feeling to try lucky. too. Feeling lucky, punk. I mean, what's in here hasn't moved or anything yet. Good point. And Wait, everyone... I have. I might. I might be able to detect. Although that would be my last spell, y'all. So I couldn't heal. It could be a trap, though. Don't worry about it. No, let's save that. Okay. Yeah, that's Just in case we need it. All right, let's go, guys. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna scout up ahead. Buckle up, fellas. Stealthily. Feeling good. We going in. Hold All right, on, guys. Can we send? 
can we send like Tom Finn first because he smells? I mean, because he's small. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna stealth. Just, uh, just Geth, 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 and Tom make your stealth checks since you're both getting up. Oh, I'm rolling shit tonight. Twenty-three. Okay. The roll when it, where it counts, Geth. Yeah. <laughs> Starting off good. Starting off the night good, guys. All right. So, as you inch your way forward into this room, um, into this room, um, you, Tom, you you kind of just you immediately just like stick to the stick to the side of the wall. It's just making sure you're back. Like there's nothing that's gonna be able, like nothing that's gonna be able to hurt you. You feel pretty sick. You feel pretty good. You feel pretty good. You make it about. Uh, you make it. You and you. You basically motion for Geth to follow you, and Geth follows behind. You make it about halfway across the room, um, before Geth, you look down, and where your foot has just landed, something didn't feel right. It doesn't feel like stone that you're stepping in. It feels Poop. like a viscous kind of liquid. It's. You look down and it's a very, like, you look down, you're stepping in like this kind of very black, very black puddle um, um, of something that feels like uh, when you try to move your foot, it feels sticky. It feels it, look it's up. very, it's very difficult to get out. What's above us? Uh, as you look, as you look up, you don't see anything oh. above you apart from the rest of the cavern. And once again, those continued pot marks. Um, however, um, as as you're as you're looking up, you look down. You look back down at your foot again and realize that the black ooze is beginning to encroach over your leg, over your foot, and actually starting to crawl up your leg. Um, you right knowing you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you automatically take a. That's not a D8. You take. Uh, five points of acid damage as you feel a no. just burning sensation on your foot, um, as this black uh, on your foot and around your around your ankle as this black liquid is just starting to cr- begin to crawl up your leg. Uh, you glance back at you glance back quickly at your at your team, um, and you see emerging from the stalagmite in the stalagmite in the middle conjoining towards you just a mass of black liquid that is all just coming and coming directly towards you. I need everyone to roll initiative. Jessica, this is your fault. (laughs) (laughs) You sent him in first because he smells. Yo, let's go! Nice! Let's go! Hell yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, thank you. I, I was about to say, you gotta give me a break. I can't do four. Wait, I have no, I have no fucking clue what's happening here. I got a in 22 here. as well. Wait a minute. Oh, you got a what? A 22. Well, Brontor, we're just gonna go arm in arm and fuck this shit up. Yeah, we got ropes. because <laughs> you guys had that sparring match. Yeah, you guys are still ready to go. We got ropes. I got a three. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. I don't want any part of this. <laughs> I'm trying to leave you guys behind. That shouldn't have been so loud. Why did I laugh so loud? Oh, man. All right. Initiative rolls. We got Dryden up. We got Dryden to start by look of it. Well, it's Dryden and Brontor, both 22. Dryden oh. and Brontor. Nice. Right. Got the rock, paper, scissors, or measure each other's dicks. See who goes first. I've got a 10 foot one here. <laughs> well, Dryden's still no. carrying, still lugging around the giant 10 foot dick from what I remember. Um, <laughs> we, can, we can work in tandem. I know how we're gonna save Tom. <laughs> save me. It's Geth, the one that's, that's. I'm the one that's stuck. Oh, Geth's stuck? Oh, I thought Geth's Tom stuck. was. Oh. No, I'm good. I'm nice and like I'm, I Spider-Man missed on the wall right now. I, I missed something while I was while I was running the space station over here. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I have fifty foot of rope we can use. I have a ten foot dick we can use. <laughs> Ooh. I wish I was kidding. The rope around the dick. Ooh, I wish kidding. I was kidding. Who's waited his whole life to say those words? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So bad. I can't believe I castrated. Can you use it as a buoy? 
<laughs> I still have muffin left over, y'all. One muffin. Grab on the dick. It's a dick All right. bridge. <laughs> so, top of the round. Dry, uh, so, top of the round, Dryden, you see as um, you see as uh, this black ooze just juts out from the stalagmite, um, missing you actually by inches as it just all con- converges on Geth. Geth, you now, it all splatters, it splatters just completely against Geth. Geth, you immediately feel your armor and everything just starting to burn and melt. Dryden, what are you doing? Um, I swear this isn't meant to be funny, but it's gonna be really funny. <laughs> oh god. What are you doing? I, sp- I, s- I spin the 10 foot dick in a 360 degree arc to hit Geth out of <laughs> like a baseball bat. That's going to hurt him. <laughs> it might hurt him, but he's going to die otherwise. <laughs> to hit Geth out of the grasp of this black liquid. Oh, man. <laughs> it's gonna be oh, some- man. <laughs> it's going to be some serious dick clash. <laughs> 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 I have to give you experience points for that one. God damn it. <laughs> I can't even. I told him oh, it man. wasn't supposed okay. to be funny. Um, <laughs> Just... um Okay, so uh, I, Okay, um I'm this, sorry, is gonna, this is going to be an Hold on. Okay. This is <laughs> This is Can't weird. Come back from it. I don't even know what I'm supposed to roll for this because this right. Hold it's on. Now a this weapon so, in my inventory, it. I guess. It's baseball, uh, so I like stamina for that. This is gonna be like a shove check to an extent. Um. <sighs> okay, so oh, you're using. Okay, so he's using an improvised weapon, which I don't think you're proficient in. <laughs> um, I need you to make. A st- athletics check. Um. Well, I'm in luck because I got a pretty good modifier on that. Good thing I got a pretty uh, good modifier on that. <laughs> oh <wow>. my god! <laughs> it's a two. But I got I got a six modifier, so it's an eight. I mean, <laughs> yeah. oh no, I don't like his face. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no. So wait a minute, are you gonna tell no. me that I swung a dick at my friend and I'm gonna fail? Like, what the fuck? This is, this is great. This is this is this is amazing. You so as so as Dryden is standing there, he gets within ten he gets within about a uh, little less than ten feet and just starts whipping the <laughs> giant ogre dick over his head. Woom, woom, woom. And he just takes it with both hands, slams it into the black, into this like black ooze form that is Geth. And it ends up uh, pushing Geth completely out of the black ooze as it just as Geth goes flying on flying to the side of um, flying to the side of the cave. Uh, Geth, you take two points of bludgeoning damage as you slam as, as, as you slam as you slam into the wall. But you're no longer burning on with acid. Yes. In all fairness, this must be the most successful mushroom stamp in the history of mankind. Like as you <laughs> as you as, as you as you pull the giant uh, ogre dick back, uh, you do realize that um, a good solid uh, a good solid portion of where the dick impacted is currently burned off and is slowly melting with the black ooze that is currently encased around it. Well, my dick! <laughs> oh, no. I was Not having my dick. Oh, um, There's another wow. one in there. There's another one. Oh, well, yeah, Try there's it. another I'm one sorry. in there. there. Bronto, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, everybody's out, right? Currently. Um, <laughs> I don't know. There you get... Wait a minute, do I get movement? Oh, I should probably show you guys what you're fighting, by the way. Yeah. That would Wait, probably be helpful. There's an image for what we're fighting. Yes. Yeah, should, should we reposition here on the? On I'm the about map? to. I'm about to position you. What okay. the shit? Uh, yeah, I'm thinking the same thing. Uh, GTFO, GTFO. Yes, yeah, let's. GTFO? You guys want to move back right oh, now. Okay. It's, right now it's like oh. that. Dry, uh, uh, Dryden's here-ish. I was gonna say, put me wherever. Dryden's I... here-ish. Geth is over here. Do I have any matches in my adventures? I was I was up here, wasn't uh, I? Brontor, Jessica, you guys are there, and Tom, you're there. Yes, exactly. Yep. Oh, good. I get movement though, right? I get yeah, you got a little bit of movement if you want it. 
And I get it, and I have I so did that swing take up my additional It took up your action and uh it took up your action. You still have your bonus action and your movement. Okay, bonus you. action. Should we run? <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking the group. I'll give that as a, I'll give that as a free action. That's fine. Uh let's 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 get the fuck out. <laughs> Because if go. so, because I don't want to take my full thirty steps the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'd rather get out too. The fuck out, the fuck out. So let's the see. Let's go. If I go hey, on the way out, hey. I throw a torch into there. So if I go a lot of torch and I throw I it in there. Thirty. Um, I guess I could cover them with some fire breath. I can get here-ish. Yeah, fire breath. Yeah, I think you'll be the last. Where'd you get a here. torch? Uh, I have ten of my adventurers back. Well, save, yeah. on, save that. Let me fire breath. Okay, fire breath. Okay, so uh, Brontor, you basically just so so, Dryden, uh, Dryden, Brontor are just piecing out. Is that what I'm getting? Well, I'm I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna watch Jessica do her fire breath and then help her out. If okay. she well, the, if are we? We're still doing back. turns like a fight, correct? What was that? We're still in turn-based moves, so Brontor would be next. This is not yes. a normal right. encounter. Yeah. Yeah. So Brontor, if you wait, that means you're giving up a turn and hoping for the best, and I don't think that's safe. You can run if you want to. Uh, what? <sighs> yeah, let's let's get out of here, guys. I only have one spell, y'all. I can't I can't keep healing. Yeah, let's also, move out. Oh shh. We don't know I, I toss a torch in there. Okay. Into the black ooze. Okay, so you light a torch. You launch it into um, you launch it into the black ooze. Um. I moved too far. I made a mistake. Ah, oh, you're fine, buddy. Okay, so you uh, go ahead and roll an attack, uh, Brontor. Uh, nine. <laughs> I don't know Even what I. Nine. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know what I would add to that. Uh, it, uh, it'll hit. Regard the nine hits. Okay. Um. Uh, go ahead and roll two d six of fire damage. Ooh. Five, five in damage. Five of damage. Okay. Yep. Nice. So, uh, you toss the, you toss the torch in. Uh, it hits the black ooze and is immediately swallowed by it. Before you see this, before you see a little bit of just flame erupt from kind of the side of it, uh, almost as like a flame burp. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, he's got some up. indigestion problems. Wait, are you gonna are and, you and, moving, Brontor? And then I'm, gonna, I'm gonna move back. Oh, Brontor, if you're moving, yeah. Yep. Where? All right. So, where's my guy? Wait. Where am I? I feel so shitty that this is our line of because we're leaving Tom and and Jessica in there. <laughs> yeah, and I don't Tom know. I'm way in the back. Tom is still <laughs> stealthy. Yeah, I am still stealth. Assuming the black goo can't smell. I can smell you. We don't know. <laughs> and I can't, like, touch it to do any, like, touch spells. That'd be a bad idea. That would be a very bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right, am I within melee distance of this guy? Uh, yeah, you're definitely within melee distance of this guy right now. All right, how, how, do, you want, how do we handle uh, disengages? Is it half movement to disengage five feet, or what? I buy a feet? Yeah, well, I mean, I've just always handled disengage every game. It's been different for different DMs. I don't think they lo no longer have disengage in fifth edition. I think if you move without melee no, range, they do. You, it's, your it's your action. It's your action. Your oh, action. Okay. Your, you you take your action. You take your action to use disengage, and you do not provoke uh, opportunity attacks for for the rest of your turn. Alrighty. So I'll disengage and. Also, get the hell out of here. Let's see, where's my... 10, 10. Ooh, how do you do that? It's about right there. There's a measuring stick on the... Um... Yeah, there is. <laughs> and that'll be my turn. All right. Uh, the older dick was this long. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He's now two feet shorter. <laughs> okay. Just because this is a thing, is there any light source in this room right now? Uh, apart from Jessica's stone, no. Oh, so the stone is still in here. Jessica has it in her hand at this point. Okay, so I can see Jessica. 
Yes. Hi. And can I see what the ooze is doing at this moment? It is currently it currently just let out this giant like fire belch that kind of scarred your retinas for a second, uh, and you see it starting to move in the direction of uh, the, the way that your group is fleeing at this point. Okay. Um, I can go further in. I think I'm gonna go further in. Shit. Because I'm curious what's back behind this thing. Um, but I don't know if I've got any sort of light source. Oh, I have an explorer's pack. Does the explorer's pack have? It's got. It does have. Uh, it will have a, a torch in there. Yeah. I got nine torches now. Um. I don't have to touch things to light things. You can use your bonus action. Sorry. I'm going to. No, I'll go. All right. So I'm. Am I within melee? Well, I assume it doesn't know that I'm still there. I'm still stealth. Yeah, it's uh, from what you can tell, it is still. It's not paying close attention to you. Okay. Screw it. I'm going to shimmy along the wall further in. Okay. Seeing what's going on. Um, until I can't really see anymore. And then I'm going to hold my... You're turn. a halfling too, right? Yeah. So don't you have a low light vision? or You've got low light vision, right? Uh, see, I couldn't find anything on... Uh, I can't remember. So that's what I was trying to find earlier. But I didn't see anything about halflings having low light. I'm double checking right now. But I okay. don't think I do. So I was just going to go until I couldn't see anymore. And then hold my turn... Uh, or stop there and light a torch. Um, it doesn't look like you do, no. That's surprising. Yeah, I don't think I do. Um, it doesn't look like it, nope. Yep. Hmm. Okay, so you can make it probably another... You can probably make it about to there before you lose vision. Okay. Um, fully. So I'll move there, and then I'm going to be grabbing my torch and starting to light it. All right, so you'll take your action to light the torch. Reveals a little bit more. You can start seeing, you have a little bit of light coming now, and you can now see probably about up to there at this point. Okay. This. okay. All right. Anything else? You can probably move a little bit more if you want to. Uh, yeah, I'll go to the edge. Um, okay. Kind of keeping the torch to my back to try not to, to light it too much. All right, so you'll probably get to about he, where I finish lighting up, so... Okay. Probably get to about there before you have to stop. Uh, or before you're probably out of movement. Okay. Uh, brings us to its turn. Oh, no. I was afraid of that. All right. So, you watch as it just... Uh, you watch as a ton of just small... What look like almost like small little raindrops just eject from it all still while all still tethered to it it goes forward all right uh-oh i'll be back <clears throat> all right what do you think um and it's going to attack uh, attack Jessica. Um, since it is right to there, that is a 18, 19, 20, 20. It's gonna be 21 to hit. I think that hits. Uh, <laughs> um, you take you take oh boy, um, it's never a good noise. Nope, it's not. Jessica, you're muted. We never healed. You take... Nope. nope. You take... Um, nine points of bludgeoning damage as the... As the... As one of the large just chunks of this black acid just slam into your into your torso like knocking the wind out of you you also take 
two points of acid damage um, as the acid begins to burn uh, your body and begins to slowly begin to corrode at the robes that you're wearing and uh, slowly begins to corrode at everything else at this everything else as well. Those are my good robes. Mm-hmm. Damn. Where does that put you at, by the way? Uh, six. All right. So, okay. It's not as bad as I so thought it was. You're still alive. <laughs> yeah. <You're> still alive, <laughs> but damn, that hurt. All right. Um. I'm trying to think what my best healing spell is. All right. Um. All right, that is where it's going to end its turn. And this brings us to Jessica. You're up. All right. Um, preserve life. I don't want to choose any creatures. Okay. Tom, you're all by yourself. I'm, I'm a bit. Son of a bitch. All right. Um, um, by myself. Do I'm going to. Be... Is, is preserve life one of my spells? That's my because that's my channel divinity. I think it is a just an action you can do if I recall correctly. Okay, I haven't channeled since the town, and we we've rested since then, so I think I'm good. I'm pretty um, sure. I'm pretty sure it's just something you do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and channel divinity in myself. I'm gonna pray oh. to Bahamut so freaking hard, um, which is. Um, restore a number of hit points equal to five times your cleric level. So five times, what, we're four now? Five times four. Twenty. So I believe that puts you up your up to your max at that point. Actually, I gained quite a bit. Oh, nice. Last level up. So, nice. but very close. Oh, cool. All right, I feel better. All right. So you, so as soon as you hit, you oh, just. Are reeling from that blow, and you, uh, grasp you grasp your holy symbol, just mutter, uh, begin enchanting and muttering a, a prayer to Bahamut, and you feel the divine energy glow around you as you feel your wounds, as you feel your wounds, uh, heal up, and you, the acid no longer is burning, and it seems to just kind of melt off your skin, down onto the ground, inactive. Uh, your robes are still burned and slowly dissolving at this point, but. Uh- um, can my bonus action be disengage? <clears throat> I know if uh, I run, it gets. It's I'm sorry, action. okay. It's an action to disengage, but. So if I start running, that he's going to get a. It'll take a swipe. It'll take a swipe at you, yeah. Yeah, an opportunity attack. I have enough HP. I'm I'm GTFOing. Yeah. I have, I have 30 yeah. feet. I'm going to get out so far. I don't know how to change back. Whoop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. You're actually. Yeah. Oh, my bad. All right. So, uh, it's going to take a swipe at you. Rolls an 18 plus 3. That's a 21 again. Um, so, that is a total of... Um, so, okay. Wrong dice. Come on. All right, so that's a total of uh, six points of bludgeoning damage, um, and a total of seven, fourteen. Jesus Christ! 15, 16, 17, 18, Ugh. eighteen points of acid damage. Oh. What? That brings me even lower. I have two. <laughs> as, but as you're you, out of there. As you as you run, the rest of you just see this large, like basically, f- uh, fist of black goose just to form in the air and just boom right into Jessica's back sending her flying forward she stumbles feeling the acid burn against her back she uh, ends up managing to pull off and still run as fast as she can out of this <laughs> but uh, now the back of your rooms are singeing and burning off, uh, and that basically dis- warm booty. basically dissolving at this point uh, <laughs> um in addition, uh, non-magical armor worn um, that you are currently wearing permanent, uh, uh, permanently is at a negative one to the armor that it offers. But I think you're wearing robes, so I don't think it offers any AC, actually. I thought I was wearing scale mail. 
Oh, you're wearing scale mail? Okay, so it's so your AC is reduced by one at this point. Okay. All right. Uh um, so that went well. <laughs> <laughs> top of the round, Dryden, you're up. Um Let's see. We got Tom going the other direction. Geth still not too far probably still within shit. Shit does things. So is Geth is still within um Geth is still within melee with it at this well it's now it, he's pretty much within range of it at this point, yeah. Oh, sh okay. Um, all right. <laughs> They're not attacking. Um, this is going to be so stupid. All right. Uh, I want to run up. Wait, Geth, how big are you? <laughs> um, five foot, I think. Oh, okay. So you're not big. Or, um, or no, I'm six foot. Sorry. Okay, so you're big. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so get to getting to Geth and back to where I am is thirty feet, um, or roughly thirty feet. I don't know how particular we're gonna be. Um, can I run up, grab Geth, and run back? <laughs> like throw him over my shoulder and bring uh, him back? <laughs> how where how where are you at? Okay, so it was literally see. fifteen feet there and Five, back. Five, ten, fifteen. Action to pick up, and you'll be moving at half your move. You'll be moving at half, so you've, uh, you'll be able to move another, f uh, probably about another five feet back, uh, five ten feet back at that point. I only half movement. What? What do you mean half movement? My strength is eighteen. <laughs> How is that half movement? Um, I'm a beast. All right, do, this. do this instead. So you I'm move fighting so you with the DM. I'm so bad at this. <laughs> do this instead. Um, run right for. For the sake for the sake of this, you run up to uh, you run up to Geth. You you basically you pick you pick him up, throw him over your shoulder. Geth, are you going willingly or are you fighting it? Uh, drop me off to where I can still see the monster. I'll still have my movement on my turn too. So I want to still see this guy. He, he's know. literally like I don't know that. I don't know that. Yeah, okay, I yeah, don't know literally that. It's, <laughs> it's little. It's literally arms just running up behind you, I'm grasping grabbing. you around. What do you and what like that's like the instant you realize, oh shit, somebody's picking me up. What the hell's happening? Yeah, I'll go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, try to make a strength. Try to make a strength check. That's like fourteen. You pick it. You pick him up. You awkwardly throw him over your shoulder um uh his uh awkwardly throw him over your shoulder uh Geth, it's your this is not comfortable um you uh, <laughs> dried it you ended up making it ju uh you end up making it just past brontor with geth um so you guys are brontor is not there Geth is technically there so you guys make it right there on your way out i'm okay with it okay all right, uh, Brontor. Yep. Uh, Pick up Dryden and run. <laughs> trying to get. How, how do we get our boy Tomph? The ultimate backpack. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> I uh, I move here, and then I'm gonna throw a spear at it. Okay. Um, I thought you were gonna try to get money for that spear. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, we'll see what happens. Make an attack roll. <laughs> uh, nine. That'll hit. Um, this is one d six plus two. Yep. Four. All right, minus four. Okay, so minus four. So you step up. You take the spear, and are you throwing it or are you jabbing it into it? Oh, I guess I am within melee, right? Yeah. And that could be a D8 instead of a D6. What are you doing? Let me let me do that. I'm gonna stab it. Okay. So, so five. As, as you take as you take the um, as you take the spear and you just jab it in. Uh, it was five. You said. Yeah. Okay. As you jab it in, uh, you feel it find purchase, but you also as you go to pull it out, you find that it's stuck in there. Um. 
you see the black acid beginning to come down the shaft of the spear, and there's a very distinct smell of melting wood and um, uh, melting wood as you just see steam kind of rising off of the spear at this point as the black liquid is getting closer, is inching its way closer and closer to your hand at this point. Um, yeah, I got to fall back to where Dryden and Geth are. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so as you are you dropping the spear and leaving it? Yep. Okay, so you let go of the spear and you just bounce back. Uh, it's going to take an attack of opportunity against you. That's a two plus five. That's a seven. So nope. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <It> as, <laughs> what? so as as you as you uh, as you um, as you back up, you see the spear actually just gets swallowed up by this uh, this black ooze, and uh, you basically turn tail and run as you hear a as you actually feel the wind just brush right across the back of your neck before a boom just slams right into the wall off to your uh, left hand, off to your right hand <laughs> side. You, oh fuck, just run the hell away. <laughs> that was scary, guys. <laughs> so, right. conventional weapons and fire don't work yet. Yeah, if you are currently on the back of a giant ogre, or a giant half- Orc who is running, who is running, uh, who's running with you. Boom, 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 boom. Right, I want to try and break free and jump down. <laughs> what the fuck, Kath? I'm working on something here. <laughs> Last week I was all about letting you take the lead. This thing does bleed. It's just a different kind I, of blood. I need I need opposed strength checks from both of you. So I need Ugh. both of you to roll a d20, and I need you both to uh, make strength checks. Am I still blessed? Are you talking about me? <laughs> no. Yes. I oh, damn, son. Wait, is this just a D- uh, Wait, am I rolling a D20 right now? Yes, yeah. you are. I need Dryden and Geth to both make opposed strength checks. Come that's on. Great. Wait, oh wait, no, wait, that's just a D20. You want a strength check? I want a strength check. Okay, okay what's so your, what's your strength mod? Four, so it'd be 19. So 19. So uh in a feat that is unprecedented, Dryden, as you're as you're running, you're you feel the your grip loosen just a bit, and Geth, you're able to slip out of his um slip you- kind of slip out slip out of his grasp, tumbling kind of off his back as he just keeps running the opposite direction of you. You roll in the you roll on the roll on the ground. Uh, coming up, coming up into a three-point, coming up into a three-point landing, um, you stand up, Brontor in front of you, kind of booking it, kind of past you, and be like, and as he passes, he's just like, "What the?" As he, <laughs> he just keeps going. <laughs> <That's> all right. <laughs> For the record, we I'm both still hero. smell like ogre dong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Brontor, as you look up, you just see the giant ogre dong just flapping. <laughs> <laughs> Smacking into the stalagmites on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> the flaccid ogre dong. <laughs> um. <laughs> no rigor mortis in this thing. Um, so I uh, swing. I uh, guess you got that was probably uh, it was probably your action and you, most of your movement there. You got a little bit oh, on it. Dang, I was kind of banking on having move or an action after that. Oh, well, it's worth it still. All right, so how much movement do I have left? Uh, you probably got you probably got about a uh, like 15, 15 feet total. That took uh, about half your. That took about that, that stunt took you about half your movement. I want to move here. Okay, that's where I was taking you. <laughs> you could have <laughs> free. You could have just. You could have literally said with my additional with my my action not my action my uh what's the bonus other bonus action bonus action you just say hey. We're, we're, we're free. Can you put me down now? And I would have been like, sure. And then you could have had all of your movement, but it said you fought. I'm not forgetting this. Yeah, but did you did you see the three point it's, landing though? It's like it's cool like, as shit. It, it it's was, like the, but now I'm like, like I'm, you point. just realized that you just emasculated a half <laughs> orc. All right. It's it's like that. Ta- it's like the Telltale games. Dryden will remember this. Dryden will remember this. <laughs> You almost said you use traditional oh. notes. Just, just put that out there. Me, Tom. Yeah. Probably. You caught yourself. I yeah. probably. Tom, what are you doing? <laughs> you what am I doing? Yeah. I'm going to peek or continue down the cave. So Tom on <laughs> his <laughs> on his on his uh, halfling spelunking expedition, he dives farther into the cave. <laughs> uh, I'm still your... stealth, correct? Yes, you're still stealth. 
Okay. As you as you get a little farther, the torch ends up uh, le- setting off a good amount of light that you can see a, another small... It's two! Excuse me. God bless you. Thank you. Cavern, um, not as big as the one that you just left, but uh, larger, and you see to the back of it a um, a small kind of blue pond uh, that with a small trickle of water that's currently coming out of it. Um, okay. Well, that's apart from that, not nothing really. Uh, go ahead and make an investigation check. Alrighty. Big money, no whammies. Yo! Yeah! Yeah! Big money, no man! <laughs> Let's go, boys. Whatever she, Jessica just said, we don't hear it. But. You literally see everything. <laughs> Sorry, I keep muting because I'm eating. You feel the the birds flapping outside. Oh, oh, and a hundred. Wow! Wow! Did you just what? Okay. Wait, what? He rolled a a, a d hundred. And got a five. No, I rolled. No, okay, no I actually, had to, I had to roll twice actually. So that was what I needed. Um, all right. So Tom, as you're glancing around the cave, you notice um, that there appears to be, uh, like, you're kind of using your torch to look around. You don't really feel like you're seeing anything. But as you get over to the small pool at the back of the cave, you uh, you use the torch to kind of uh, get some light in there and you look down and you can see what appears to be at the bottom of this small pool. Um, What looks like a fist sized rock of some form. It seems to be kind of like the light catches it and glint uh, makes it glitter in a way that you're not used to seeing. Um, uh, You see at the bottom, it looks like it's at the bottom of the pool from what you can tell. Uh, How deep is the pool? Uh, best guess, mate, from what you can tell, maybe 10 feet deep. 10, 12 feet deep. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go to the edge of the pool and put down the torch on the edge. Okay. So it's still there. Um, um, I'll let, I don't know how long term wise we're going. Um, uh, this is kind of its own separate thing right now. So I'm just kind of, we're just kind of, I'm going to we can I'm going to finish this up and then we're going to head we're going to get you back up into that area. OK, uh, well, then I'm going to I'm going to try and dive down and and grab this thing. Okay. I'm curious. So you uh, you um, you you place your you place your uh, torch in the sand um, and it, it seems to function pretty well. You uh, j- you j- you basically take a few steps back. Take a running, take a run at it, and just splash into the water before being able to start swimming. This is probably the first bath you've had in months. Um, uh, you end up uh, st- uh, starting to swim down and down and down. So uh, you uh, until you manage to actually get your hands around uh, the large rock. Um, it looks like it is some form of. Uh, Auburn color. Um, it's not cut specifically well, uh, but it looks really nice. It, like it's it, it looks kind of like kind of like a rougher, almost gemstone like gemstone from uh, pos- uh, gemstone that you can tell. Um, as you as you're as you're uh, as you're about to as you're about to push off, something else catches your eye at the bottom, um, and it looks like a small glass vial of some form um, that seems to have. Uh, a small glass vial that seems to be corked as well. Um, all right. I grab the vial as well. Okay, so you grab the vial. You at this point you're probably pushing your. your uh, at this point you make it about halfway up before your lungs start to burn in the ache of air. You are you kick and kick, and eventually your head. Poosh, Burst from the water, uh, the hair spraying back the cleanest it's ever been in months. Oh no! It's, nice. it, it's 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 a very it's a very almost like a kind of uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, it, it's it's like one of those like man, damn, 
like the hair kind of flows back in slow motion. If anyone's there to see it, uh, <laughs> the water just sprays. I'm, I'm pulling a Fabio right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you walk out. Um, in your hands, you grasp this large auburn colored rock about about the size of your fist, if not a little larger. Um, and you grasp uh, a as you get closer to light a small glass vial that is currently corked and has some form of reddish gold liquid in it. Okay. Um, I'm going to put those in my inventory. Okay. And uh, there was nothing else in the investigation. That was all that was there, right? That was the investigation there. Yep. All right. Uh, then I'm going to start heading back. Okay. You head back. You make your way, you make your way, um, heading back. This brings us to the, the pudding's turn. Um, oh, buddy. pudding. The pudding. The pudding. The pudding. The with the, with the pops. And the with the okay. Uh, it's acid flavored. It's going it's acid flavored. It's, flavored. It's, <laughs> it is. It, it's uh. It as it as it continues to move forward, it realizes that it, uh, it continues to move forward. Um, Brontor, you see it coming down the tunnel after you. Boom. Boom. It makes it about. It makes it within five feet of you before. It stops. No. And you, it seems to almost start shrinking in size as it starts to recede back down the tunnel from whence it came. Oh, thank God. Oh. Tomf, as you get back, Tomf, as you get back into the into this stalagmite um, cavern, you see this large black shadow, right, like pretty much just split into hundreds of different little droplets and back into the stalagmite in the middle of the cavern from whence it came. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to get right to the edge of the, the... So right about here. Okay. And then I'm going to try and take some of my torch Okay. and I put it on the air, on the air one of my arrows... Okay. And and I'm going to shoot the arrow to the back side of the cave. Make an attack with disadvantage. You're talking about back over as in do the thing. Yeah, like back there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So with disadvantage? With disadvantage because this is a very different weighted arrow than you're used to. Okay. Where did the pudding go? Back into the stala- in the center of the central stalagmite. Brontor, okay. listen. I'm sorry. God. Okay, so 17 and a crit. Oh. <laughs> I think it's gonna work, guys. <laughs> you, what about you take, these twenties tonight? You take the arrow and it, you, you adjust for the weight. You aim up higher and release it. You see just as a red streak of light just across the across the cavern. Um, before it even manages to hit the ground, you see uh, spreading out from the central stalagmite the black ooze. It spreads out and. Grasps onto the torch, extinguishing it, um, and attack and latching on and attacking it. Um, this probably be the time that you want to do something. Yeah, I was, that's what. I, when I see this, I'm going to use a, a, a reaction to start darting back towards yeah. the um, where they went. All right, uh, make a stealth check. Unless okay. you're trying, to, unless you're not doing it stealthily. Um, I will attempt stealthily. Okay, go for it. Okay. Um, by stealthily, I mean very stealthily, quickly. <laughs> <laughs> you make it about five feet before uh, your feet hit a bunch of just loose pebbles. Um, there's a, you see a slight reaction from the ooze. At that point, you're just like fuck, 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 and just bolts as fast as you can. <laughs> you all make get out of there. <laughs> you all make your way back to the main cavern uh, where the trolls are. Um, as the rest of you are waiting and waiting, you just all of a sudden hear a ah, as Tom just comes running out of <laughs> running out of the um uh, the cavern that you were all just in. Whoop! You guys, you guys, yeah. Hey, buddy. Hey, <laughs> your buddy, pal. Not your buddy again. I'm not your guy, friend. <laughs> all right. So, you all make your way back to the cavern. Alive. That thing was nasty. 
pretty yep. sure that was not Herc. I know. No. I'm Don't basically so. dead. I'm All really right. hurt, guys. Yeah, um, it's not I good have... when our healer is hurt this yeah. much. I think it's probably I... a good idea if <laughs> I know we want to save these people. I mean, but... aren't they kind of saved? Well, there's no, there four was, people missing. There's four people missing that we were looking for. Uh, I know we want to go save them, but in the protection of <laughs> our own hides, we don't owe these people anything. We've already saved most of the village. We weren't. We didn't, could. We can't always guarantee that we're always save all of them. I say we go outside, take a rest, and if we feel that we want to come back in here and try again, we could, but I'm all for protecting our own hides. So the guy who oh. takes no damage... <laughs> no, I've got damage. From that I fight? Taken any. Not in that fight, now. But from the previous fight, I'm at half health. But that's, I'm, that's my two cents. I think that's smart. Do you guys want to take a rest in the stalactite forest over here with these ogres lived and get at it again or do you guys just want to exit the cave i mean it, i'll leave we, that up to you guys i like being outside in the forest i mean that i like being in this cold dark i desolate. literally have one spell and two hp that's all i got going right now y'all isn't, I'm the, saying this, isn't the town that we just sort of half rescued like right there like with beds it's, well, it's it's about it's about a two hour walk from where you guys are at. But, well, um, son of a, I felt like we were right. Th- All right. Yeah, it's a little bit away. What's closer? It's a little bit. Away. What's closer, the inn we started at, or the inn that we we had our first fight it, at? It took us days to get there. Yeah, okay. yeah. It would take a, it would it's take a week, week or so walk. to get let's back to. Let's go back to the town. Tell them we'll yeah, get to the tomorrow. Back to let's nightstand. Go back to the yeah nightstand. Are we getting yeah. out of this cave? Yeah, I, I'm. I don't want to be in the cave anymore. I can't. Before we before we leave, I want to take a look at all these bodies around here and just Dirty. enjoy the the impact on how they died and and the way they died. Okay. You want to get another dick, Dryden? <laughs> um, <laughs> he wants the D. I was gonna say I'm more so gonna sit back and go, guys. We should not trust Brontor. <laughs> He's um, taking a quick moment to enjoy death. <laughs> I, know, I just I just enjoy like you ever seen Dexter. What's wrong with a little bit of carnage? <laughs> like be I said, out. we should be concerned. Yes. <laughs> How loose are the whatever the stalagmites or stalactites, the upper ones are, um, above like right here? Trying to cave side. Um. Uh, they're. I mean, they're pretty well wedged in. I mean, like they're growing out of the ceiling. So. Okay. I'm just thinking maybe we should uh block that off just in case. I mean, the things coming in and out of the tips of of these things, so I don't think we have the ability to seal this thing appropriately. I was, I was thinking, like, seal the hallway. Didn't you? Wasn't there a rock over on the other hallway? It was yeah. uh It was. It was like it was like a small like halfling side, like three five. Foot, um, like three, four, it was like, just covering like, a hole. It was just covering like kind of like small little hidey hole. Okay. Yeah, I think it'll be all right. I mean, I can try to. Swing my warhammer and close up this path if you want to. No, no, no. I don't, no use in uh, exerting any effort. I was going to do some tremors and see if I can knock some stuff down, but I think that'd probably just alert it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Knowing my luck. <laughs> just get out of here. Let's get out. I can't. I, I'm, I'm literally holding on by a thread. Wait. Is there any way for us to know if any of us have seen something like that before? Uh, that'd be a history check. From everybody um, you want. I'll, 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 can I just start my, uh, my knowledge? Oh, I've done better. Got a 13. 11. Wow, I'm just not rolling well. Uh, Bronto, or, uh, not Bronto, uh, Tom, what'd you get? Uh, sorry, uh, history, history? Right? Yeah, history check. Oh, oh, no. oh <laughs> shit. Oh, Christ. I'm on point tonight. So, Tom, Crit tell us about Crit. what you've learned in your travels. Uh, so Tom, you have definitely come across something like this before in your um in your travels. Not something you want to come across um not something you want to come across often because it's well, they're just not fun. Um you know this thing as uh as an ooze or better better yet known as um amongst uh 
amongst rangers and ranging folk, um, the a black pudding. Um, it normally uh, resembles a fairly like heavy mound of like sticky black sludge. It normally likes to live in like dimmer areas, dimmer passageways. Um, it oftentimes it, like in small little things, it can it can appear to be just a little more than blots of shadows. Um, pretty much almost anything will dissolve when the pudding is ebbed over it. Flesh, wood, metal, bone. Um, you've heard that even some rain, like even uh, some less than savory mercenaries have used black puddings in order to dissolve of bodies that they don't want found. Um, uh, it's, it's not the most pleasant thing to come across. So is yeah, that, guys, this thing's not good. Thanks for the summary. It's like, so basically it's like super acid that's got thoughts and it goes and attacks things and it likes dark places. Do you know if it has any weaknesses? Uh, not that I know of. Are you sure about that, or is there a, a... Hold on, let me let me scan the old noggin again <laughs> and double check and see if there's anything that I remember. I hate you all. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not fire. We're mainly well, um, uh, roll an intelligence check. Intel. Come, Crit, on, come on, keep it going. Yo, Ooh, let's go! Bad, bad, let's bad. go! <laughs> Hopefully we don't fight anything else because you just used all your rolls. Yeah, I am done for the night. You guys got all you good from me. <laughs> uh, while not specifically vulnerable to anything, you are aware that it is that that there are certain things that have no effect on it. Um, you know ob- that you know that obviously acid has next has no effect on it and neither does any form of cold neither does any form of cold damage um has no effect on it those are the two things that you remember okay so crimson right acid so it doesn't it it, being cold and uh acid i don't think does anything to it if i because i I don't think hot makes it weaker. I just no, I, I, I threw a, I threw a torch at it and didn't it just burped it up. Yeah, oh. I I think I th- it's just like resistant or like it doesn't like cold and acid don't do anything to it if I remember. As Jessica is sort of in and out of consciousness here. Um, <laughs> nah, you're not uh, in and out of consciousness. You're alive. You're just you're just you're, you're you just feel the burns with every movement at this point. You're in a you're in a good chunk of pain at this point. Um, you're like you know, there, there's, there's still four four lives out there um, needing our help um, in, in parts of the cave we haven't really explored yet. I could heal myself. Um, I, I hate to leave any living body behind. Guys, if you want to take a long rest in this stalactite forest, you I can, really want to. You really want to camp out, don't you? I can keep watch. No big deal. All right, what he, you guys wants to, he wants to poke around the bodies. Yeah, I do. All right, guys. All right, guys. What are you doing? At least give me a chance to save rights over the bodies. Now, what happens if we just like take twelve steps outside and camp outside of the damn cave? That's my thoughts. I just like being in the cave. I appreciate what you guys are thinking, but here's my thoughts: is if these things can't leave the cave, like if light or something is something it can't deal with, then maybe we shouldn't stay within its environment. Where well, I can create light, and I'm kind of with Brontor. I want to say rights over these dead bodies, and I think we should stay here. I just want to see how this these still, wounds, like what the exit wounds look like and whatnot. There's pretty cool stuff, guys. Jessica, how do you like this? How are you into this? <laughs> my my purpose is to preserve life, and, and his purpose uh, is to destroy it. life. I just want to point that out. His life, well, is, not to destroy life, just to see how to death. the world. While they're arguing, I go over to the the mud blood bath. Yeah. And start restyling my <laughs> hair after this bath that I took. I could just feel feel the the sort of cleanliness about you, me. And you so feel I feel the clean, and it and makes your skin. Cool. I I turn to Geth, and I just quickly comment. Didn't he look like almost handsome without the shit in his hair? Like he a little good, bit. Man. And so while you know, while, he didn't smell Tom, do you go back over bad. the mud pit. As yeah, I'm I'm in the mud pit, just kind of okay, like. Okay, you in halfling. I'm gonna go over there to the. Uh... Dryden, go ogre and see how he died. Okay. Dryden, Dryden, 
I'll go outside the cave and we can rest as long as you promise we go we go back in and, and try to find where these four four people are. Oh, I promise we go back in. Do you guys see how the impact on his ogre was with the battle axe? Can I do a, an insight hammer? check to see if he's lying? God, I'm, I'm, this I'm, is so cool, guys. Yeah, you can. Yeah, bro, have roll insight. <laughs> oh, and look at that goblin up there, guys! Like when I shot him with that crossbow ar- arrow, it kind of like in. it entered his head and then like left it. That's so cool. Um, uh, Dryden, are you? Uh, uh, am I actually? Am I being? Of course, I'm gonna come back in. I like fighting shit. All right, all right. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> he's, he's honest enough. He seems like. I mean, he's still dragging around with the giant, the giant ogre dick. And you, it's true. I, mean, <laughs> I am still driving around. He's got a big old hunk out of it. Like, like it's missing part of it, but he's still dragging it around. I mean, okay, all right, let's go, let's heal up. All right, let's get you out all, here. you all head out after Tom. You all head out. Uh, some of you taking a little longer than others to walk out of the cave. Tom, if you spend a good solid five minutes making sure that your hair is a sh- the shit pile. <laughs> and- I, I want to make fun of him, but I'm still dragging a ten foot ogre dick around <laughs> with me. Like, I can't. What am I gonna say? A pillows for everyone. Like, I don't. It's know. now. Hold on. Two feet of that guy. It's, it's an eight <laughs> foot ogre dick, it's right? It's now an eight foot ogre dick. <laughs> um, so, Tom, you uh, you make it. You make sure it's it's looking good. It's looking good. Uh, you, you even yeah. grab some. You even grab some of the blood uh, from the ogre. Put it in there. You you like the red highlights. It the seems red to work well. Yeah. It seems to work well. Um, eventually, you all make it outside. Uh, it, it's it's a at this point it's pr- uh, you notice that the sun is dipping lower into the uh, it is hitting dusk at this point, um, and uh, the sun is setting at this point. You take some time to set up camp. Um, you guys are setting up camp just outside of the outside of the cave at this point. Yep. Yeah. 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 I, like, I do a little uh, prayer over the ogre ding dong because um, that's all the pieces I have to do some rites. Over. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I love it. Uh, oh my so, god! <laughs> so, so unbeknownst, unbeknownst to Dryden, because Dryden needs Dryden, Dryden knows how to set up a camp. He he starts going out looking for. Looking for uh, firewood, looking for a good place to like set up the actual the actual campsite. And while you're clearing and clearing out and clearing out of space and collecting firewood, uh, Jessica, you walk over to the current eight foot long ogre dick and just begin uh, walking around it, muttering and doing the final rites of passing for the lost member of well, the lost member. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, with your spells and with your prayers completed, eventually camp comes to uh, camp. Come camp comes up. Um, you uh, you enjoy a, a uh, you enjoy a, a meal of um, some scavenged Muffin. of some of either some muffins, some scavenged food, or some dried uh, or some um, some food rations that you would have. Wolf meat. Some of the wolf meat as well. If you guys prepare, if you guys feel so prepare that you want to prepare it, um, and we and at that point, dusk and night has finally settled in. Uh, campfire currently lighting the lighting the area oops, um, that you guys are currently sitting at and around. Okay, so I have some noob questions. I think this is our first like real long rest. So I get my divinity back. So a long rest is eight hours. So you'll get it back. You'll get everything back at the beginning of the all your spell slots. All, all your spell sp- slots, yep. divinity. But are HP, you saying we HP's don't have up. that back right now? We have to wait. You until have it back at the be- at at at. You have it back after you finish after the, a long rest. after you've finished your six to eight hours of rest. Yep. Okay. And we'll get full HP, all our spells, and yep. all, all, everything back. Is it done? Are we done? Is it resting? Well, Have we rested? Yeah, well, yeah, it's, that's where we're at. We're, just, okay. we're currently resting. Okay. I'll, wa- I'll keep watch. Okay, so Bronto, are you keeping watch? Uh, are you, you taking the whole night, or you want to do shifts? Um, I'll take most of the night. I don't think I've taken any damage in this these fights. Lucky are you, fucking you. Are you, gonna, are you gonna rest at all, or um? Um, take... you're gonna get sleepy, I, buddy. I, hey, yeah, we can do halves. I'll split it with you. Okay. okay. Okay, so, all right. 
Does that mean I get a short rest then? No, you get no. You st you'll still get your long rest. Oh yeah, buddy. <laughs> so, as <laughs> so as you are all as you are all uh, as you're all taking your rest, uh, Bronto, are you starting and then uh, Dryden taking the ha back half? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Brontor, as you are, uh, as you're, as you're taking a rest, uh, or, or so as the rest of, as the rest of you eventually find yourself to sleep, eventually find yourself to, um, to, to rest and to your into your short rest, or to your long rest. Um, Brontor, you sit up, lining for the fire to slowly dim, but all occasionally throwing an extra log on there to maintain the fi or maintain the light source around. Um, you allow yourself to just kind of take in the the beauty of the night. It is a very clear night, although no moon is um no moon is visible in the sky. Um, um, <laughs> how is that funny? I'm you gotta read chat. I'm sorry, sorry. Chat. we're having our own little no, no, side no. chat. <laughs> Damn it, I can't even look at it because I... Anyways. No, 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 you do your thing, you do your thing. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Way to break the moon, guys. I'll have to go back and watch the rebroadcast. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Um, <laughs> God, I hate all of you. Uh, so, uh, so, Brontor, as you're... Uh, eventually, your watch comes to an end. Seemingly uneventful. Oh exactly. great! That means that mine's. So when I switch out, how much HP do I have? You're back at full. You're okay, back I'm at back at full yeah. now. Okay, you said well when this was over, I would be. So I just so I go sure. and I go and tap Brontor's it, toe, this, wake him up. This is not, like that's considering that you got your full you you got full you got your full long rest. Like you're still basically you're basically short rest. You're basically like you're still pseudo resting when you're doing your watch. Like unless like something <laughs> happens, like okay, yeah. no changes. Okay. Shut up. Wake. Yes. Does my armor class go up, or is it permanently acided? Um, I mean, have you ever had clothes fix themselves because you're sleeping? <laughs> <laughs> as much as I hate to say it, he's right. <laughs> if it I is, sleep in my favorite clothes, they're clean the next day. Currently, is, is my is my rear end still hanging out like a like a hospital gown? <laughs> Not your rear end, but it's okay. definitely now like a more open back robe. Okay. Uh, <laughs> But your armor class is effectively reduced by one at this point due to the, uh, like, you are still pretty much in burnt acid robes and acid armor at this point. <laughs> cool. Um, cool. Although it is no longer burning. Okay. So dry it. Good. Oh. As you dry it. I come in and tap your toe. It's your turn for a shift. Mm. Huh? Mm. Okay. Hey, hey, get get up, bro. Okay, I'm, I'm up. done. Oh. I had to sleep. Eventually. I imagine he was using the donger as a pillow. Uh, yeah, why not? <laughs> All right. Um, I feel like so a as, couple of us might have been. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. So uh, anyways, so Dryden, you eventually wake up. Your shift begins. Brontor, you eventually find your way to sleep. Um, Dryden, as you're, uh, as you're, as you're resting there, um, make a perception check. Oh, no. <laughs> oh no! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh. damn it! Oh. All right. yes. Nice one. One Listen, minus it's... one. <laughs> two, or two minus one. That's great. Perception is so not my strong point. Carrying our smaller members around is. <laughs> so try as you are. Um, and bigger apparently members. not because they break free. Oh. Oh, 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 oh! Failing on all aspects tonight. So Dryden, so Dryden, as you are, um, as you are currently, as you are staring off into the, into the flames themselves, um, you hear, <laughs> you hear the, uh, you hear the, uh, you hear the, the fire. You hear the fire crackling. You, your gaze, you kind of zone out, just kind of watching the fire as it licks the as it licks the wood um, around it, and you just kind of get lost in the, in just the ever changing um, plasma that is the fire. Um, 
you fail to notice. Of course, um, I did. You fail to notice part of a shadow that, or a shadow that is walking around the fire camp, and seemingly to you, seemingly to you, out of the shadows behind the fire that, you, like across from you, across the fire from you, emerges a small humanoid. Um, from what you can tell, slightly green skin, slightly pointed ears. Oh no, not not another one of these some bitches. Very short, shorter than shorter than shorter than you, a lot shorter than you. Okay, wearing what appears to be black, like kind of black leather armor, um, and a black uh, black leather armor, barefoot, um, a black, a uh, very very midnight black hair that seems to be brought back into a ponytail and then falls down his back. Uh, no facial hair whatsoever. Very angled features, um, and it looks up to it looks up to you. And in common speaks, uh, look up in common, looks up to you. In in common says speaks. So, you are the one, the ones that murdered my people, killed my pets. Oh no, it's this guy. And invaded my home. I've got to say, I'm impressed. Do we wake up upon hearing him talk? I'm. I feel like he's like under his breath. I would doubt it. He's he's speaking very quietly. He's speaking to you, Dryden. Yeah, we're still sleeping. What was the guy's I'm, name? I'm prepping it, spells right now, by the way. It started. It's it started with an H. What was what was the guy's name? Hark. 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 I, I you asked, guys are asleep. I asked him. I, I'm sorry. This is knowledge I have, but I didn't write <laughs> down. Okay. <laughs> Shut up. Anyways. I I asked him. I I asked him. Penis related. He doesn't write it down. Uh, Hark. I asked him if his name is Hark. You speak in a very weird phrase of voice. Hi, my name is Hark. And I run these hills. No one enters or leaves this place without paying a tax. To me, of course. They must satisfy my price. Well, well what's your price? Normally we ask normally I ask for gold. Silver. Trinkets that you might have. So actual like an actual tax. An actual tax, yeah. Okay, right. this isn't a metaphor. Alright. Just making sure. I don't play in metaphors. No, metaphors are for intellectual creatures. This is more fun. <laughs> I, like shiny, I like shiny things. <laughs> shiny things. Things that I can trade for alcohol. Shiny things that I can trade for beer. Whiskey. Okay. Love experience. Lady fingers. <laughs> I thought you said lady fingers? That's what I thought I said. Too. <laughs> yes, as you can see, no. Lady fingers. How about a 10 foot ogre dick? <laughs> Eight, um, foot. Eight foot. My price for you and your compatriots is 12 gold pieces for the entire rest of you to leave our hills unscathed, unmolested. Oh, you look like you were going to say more, so I was waiting. <laughs> um, you know what? I'm kind of just over this shit. I give him 12 gold pieces. Ugh. He reaches his hands out, takes takes the 12 gold pieces, and puts them into a small coin purse on uh, on his side. You don't have 12 gold pieces. Uh, yeah, I actually have 95. Yeah, he actually oh, has, He's been our mule. He's got, he's got a good chunk, yeah. Damn, I thought you were no. like four silver. No, I have four silver. I, I, oh, no, I started with a good chunk of gold, and then we were awarded okay. a bunch of gold. Okay. That was all he picked up. Anyways, um, he pockets the gold. A pleasure doing business with you. 
if you ever need anything in these hills or any need, need any information, don't hesitate to pay. And myself and the remainder of my compatriots will do what we can. Sounds good. At which point he turns, walks out of the firelight. At that point, I take a silver piece out of my bag and chuck it at the back of his head and said, this is for your mom. I forgot to tip her. <laughs> oh, damn. Damn it. <laughs> That's the trident I know. <laughs> this dude needs some bullets. <laughs> the, the, silver, the silver bounces off the back of his head. Ting. And then on onto the Ting, 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 ting. Ting. I need to be. He looks. He looks down at it. Bends down and picks it up. <laughs> I don't even know what like one looks, silver to one gold is. I just know it's uh, less. <laughs> looks. Uh, holds. Holds it up. Holds it up and thanks and says. She had the troll before she had you, and walks off. Hot dog <laughs> in the hallway. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Walked off. The rest I of like how I just traded insults with, no with other, this. And with no other intrusions. <laughs> I'm just kind of snickering to myself because I, I know I've upset him and I'm okay with it. Eventually. Don't even ask about the, the settlers. That's cool. Okay, so I went from four to three spiders. silver. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, the sun crests over the hills. You all come to consciousness. The day is yours. What do you like to do? Tell everybody this. about what happened. Obviously. Dryden, what did you guys see last night? You met the guy we're looking for you and don't... didn't ask him about the four settlers. No, These I'm... are people in need. They need our help. And he He's needed a good, solid mom joke. <laughs> did you at least? Did you at least ask him about the scroll and the box? No, because I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> my right, wisdom well, and knowledge, or my wisdom and intelligence modifiers, are negative one. I forgot. Leave me did alone. You, did you at least see which way he went? He went that way. Oh. <laughs> he points back. He points back in the direction of the cave. <laughs> I know which way he went. I just can't tell you because I didn't see it. I know which direction he went. <laughs> well, I'm feeling a lot better um, after my, all, my rest. Yeah, you're all back up to full hit points. You all have your spells back. Um, are there any up. like wheat fields around that I could like make up some pancakes for everybody in the Nobody's morning? Nobody's all breakfast? that interested in what just happened. <laughs> like, like Jessica's a little pissed. I didn't ask more questions. But everyone, was like, "Okay, I'll make pancakes." Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'll make pancakes. Like, there's four people missing. I met I the just, guy. I didn't I say anything. I just woke up. And you're bringing all this information in on me. I haven't had my I gotta coffee get, I gotta get yet. A to wake up. <laughs> I can make some coffee. And then Tom, Tom, no, call me Tom, 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 don't, don't worry coffee. about it. Oh, he's coffee. gonna make coffee. Please don't make coffee. make coffee. Okay, <laughs> Tom's making coffee. I guess. Yay. I'm upset that you didn't wake me up to shoot him. <laughs> I know, and that's I'm trying to get you to shoot less people right and, now. Okay. And, and let me let me get this but straight. You gave, him, you gave him our gold and silver. I gave him my gold and my silver, <laughs> and the silver was for his mother, who I called a whore. <laughs> what did he say back? I'm sorry. Uh, he said something about his mom fucking an ogre. It didn't help the guy's cause. <laughs> <laughs> Why is no one else appreciating my sense of humor? <laughs> uh, it's like funding ISIS. Telltale I'm style. Dryden very distraught. <laughs> I come back with a nice hot steaming cup of coffee. Did you just, just did you just 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 good just does a prayer a before she um drinks thanks drinks thanks up. thanks Tom Tom did you just shit into a mug <laughs> <laughs> No thanks thanks I'd insight <laughs> insight check <laughs> <laughs> Who's insight checking <laughs> um. I'll hit it <laughs> Seth you're doing an insight check Okay, good, because if you fucked that up, you're about to drink shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, <laughs> Ton? No, How'd it's you make not the shit. coffee? <laughs> it's my normal coffee. It's just. Why is, it's it, my, why is it steaming then? I'm sorry, I know how to make good coffee. We have a campfire. <laughs> how else do you make coffee? Wait, did you it's make not... actual coffee? No, I made my coffee. The only coffee I knew how to drink. Which is it's mud, it's mud, mud poop mud. coffee. It's just it's just heated up <laughs> mud. All right. Considering all considering all of you actually had a chance to witness him uh, make coffee, uh, Tom, I need you to make a nature check. All right. Because <laughs> he's doing it around the fire. He's making it around the fire that you guys are making it. Oh, no. okay. It's burnt mud coffee. It's burnt mud coffee. <laughs> you, watch, you watch with interest as he pulls out a pot, seemingly out of nowhere, um, puts it over the fire, uh, fills it with water, um, and then he actually goes off to the nearest tree finds um uh looks around that tree doesn't like what he finds goes to a few trees farther uh goes a few tr trees farther in and eventually finds what you're look what he's looking for comes back with what looks like a root of some form takes out one of uh takes out uh a small dagger and begins chopping it up um into a very coffee. into a very very fine powder and ends up sprinkling that into the water itself after which he then takes a few gra he takes a few blades of grass a few other herbs and sprinkles those in as well um, then comes the weird stuff he literally picks dirt out of the ground drops okay, it just drops it the coffee. drops like a drops like a pinch of it in then pours it into cups but say I was very close to making tea there for a second <laughs> or don't want to mix up tea and coffee I grab my mug and go Mmm. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> no problem, Brontor. Anytime. My specialty. Brontor. And I slowly poured into the, the plant next to me. <laughs> the plant I'm, I'm under a tree meditating. When he's not looking. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to meditate under a tree because I can't even. Okay, so you finished <laughs> the breakfast. What are you guys doing? Mm. Go first. back in there. There's some people that need to be killed. No, no there's saved. There's saved. some people that need to be saved. Why? Wait, okay, why and are Brontor and Geth to starting to scare me? <laughs> so we gotta get our money back from this guy that you gave money to. It's my money. It's not your money. I gave him my money. But, but it's still, my money, and I'm If I kill him, then it can be my money. No, if you kill him, it's right. my money. <laughs> no, not, not just, if you don't see it. Jessica just beelines right for the cave. Do you want to spar again? <laughs> All right, Jessica, just. Jessica just after as you guys are all bickering back and forth, Jessica just stands up out of her meditation and just starts walking towards the cave. Oh, I turn to the walking. other three and say, "This is our chance." <laughs> <laughs> as much as that five thousand gold split four ways instead of five ways, as, as good as that Fine. sounds. I'll, I'll have my last laugh in the afterlife when y'all go to hell. <laughs> yeah, you have fun with Bahamut. <laughs> Dude, Bahamut's bay. You just said Bahamut is bay. Oh my <laughs> god, <laughs> guys, do I need more so of an argument? Jessica, Jessica's already in the... <laughs> like, already pretty much, pretty much already bay. My right. husband. My I'm, husband. Right, I'm right behind her. So Jessica, Bronto, and everyone. I, Jessica and Bronto are already making their way back in towards the cave at this point. I knew you'd come up and draw following it. All right, Geth follows. I wait to see what Tomf does. <laughs> uh, I'm actually going to go back in the cave. See, I've <laughs> I've taken Tomf to be something of... Uh, I, I care about Tomf. Not romantically, but I worry about like him because... Like a animal? Because I, 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 as much as I've traveled, I still view smaller creatures as weaker creatures, and I worry for Tomf because I enjoy him. And so I go in to make sure he's okay. I follow Tomf. So I said, I said to Tomf and Halfling, you ready to fuck shit up? <laughs> <laughs> Damn straight. <laughs> Let's go. So as Let's the rest go. of you, so as the rest of you make your way towards the cave, Dryden, Dryden stands there, kind of just and begrudgingly picks up the giant ogre dick and starts dragging that back. <laughs> <towards> <laughs> the cave. I keep forgetting about the ogre dick. <laughs> Eventually, you make it all the way back into the cave. Jesus, um, what would you like to do? Uh, Let's go yeah, I was about to say. I think we still have the two on the left. Side. Well, we fell down there. Um, 
when we got did we see anything toward the left when we fell down i know we went straight right but did no, it, that was a cave wall there it was a cave wall yeah so there's only one more area to look well, there's or two, no, two, two, there's two. Side. yeah there's two on the bottom okay so so yeah i guess we go left let's go left okay so you this looks like a plumbus you all make your way into this, into this, into uh, you make your way into the this uh, smaller opening um, that looks like it's about goblin size. Uh, it's very difficult to kind of um, not where get. Uh, okay, you're doing where guess is at, or are you going down here? Well, you said the smaller one, and that one looks smaller to me. This where guess is at? Okay, so. Okay. We all can... right, we'll we'll go we'll go to the one where guess is at. Okay, so. Uh, you end up uh, walking down the tunnel that guess it, or that guess is in front of. Um, as you continue it, as you continue following it, this one actually seems to be fairly straight. It's uh, there's a slight. You come to a small opening and cavern that has a small pool of water kind of uh, running through it, um, and then continuing down uh, and farther into the um, farther into the cave. Um, um, a path leads t- leads kind of more towards the north uh, and leads uh, farther in. Um, you guys follow that? Yep. Yeah, let's go check it out. Wait, yes. there's a water. There's water though. Can anyone swim? Or is it not that deep? I'm a human. I can swim. I feel like I can swim. I feel like when I'm time proficient is at swimming, but I don't know. I just how deep is that water? Can I check? Uh, it's like ankle deep for you. Oh, can I? Do you guys have an, any opposition to me going up the creek? Go for it. Yeah, you go for it. Yell if you need us. I, I will. So I, hey, I'll... wait a minute. Before you go, let me tie this rope around you. And that way you have some Did kind of way to get giggle back. giggle at that? Just... <laughs> yeah, because, yeah, because you were tying a rope around uh, Tom for earlier today. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> earlier in the session. Um, so, Dryden, as you begin walking down the stream, um, you make it about probably about 40 feet. Um, before you realize that the walls are starting to get smaller, you kind of turn to your side, starts shimming down. The guy is going to get stuck. You put before you realize <coughs> can't get much forward. You try to start going back. <coughs> stuck in the belly. <laughs> I'm not fat. <laughs> is, this is, is this with or no, without must- the ogre dick? <laughs> You're muscular. You realize that the walls are like a lot thinner and probably not meant for half or or half orcs at this point. Um, you're effectively stuck. Um. Well, I you got don't the rope, right? Sh- I yep, don't. The rope's you, wrapped around me. Uh, you can go ahead and give it a pull and see what happens. We try to tug him out of there. Yeah, let's let's get on board here. If you're gonna right tug, now. put your hands in view so it doesn't look like you're just down here doing this. <laughs> <laughs> and seeing that Dryden is kind of kind of placed back there, I yell. So, are you stuck between a rock and a hard place? Hey. Uh, <laughs> I, I um, respond back very straightforward with. Yes. So I give it a way. tug to try to get him out of there. Yeah. Make it, all right. Uh, everyone make a strength. Everyone who's helping this make a strength check. I'm just watching. I'm just gonna. He did this I'm, to himself. I'm gonna throw the strength check just to see if I beat everybody. Yep. <laughs> Twenty one. All right. Oh. So damn it. So Bronto. with. <laughs> With everyone's help, Dryden or uh, Bron, no, that's right. Dryden, you feel your body dislodge, and you're able to make your way back down the creek uh, to the rest of your. Uh, hey Tom, ask me what I saw. Hey Tom. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tom is very concerned about what's going on in his head right now. <laughs> oh, man. Hey Dryden, what'd you see back there? Your mother's vagina. Uh, <laughs> uh, the mom jokes keep coming. Uh, <laughs> fellas, fellas, helpless people. Quest. Tomp, I bet you can't get past where he got. Oh, oh you want to make it interesting, Brontor? Make it interesting. Five, five GP. <laughs> First bet of the game. Here we go. All right. I'm Sorry. going. <laughs> All right. Hold on. I'm going to tie a rope around you first. All right. 
Hey, we're good. I'm going down the creek. All right. I'm going to start heading up this way. Okay. Hi, Jessica. I'm gonna you, it, it, it's about a, uh, it's about like calf height or not calf height. It's about like a thigh height for you. You go splashing through. You make it, um, you make it about to where, uh, to, or, uh, to where Dryden did. Um, before you realize that your shoulders are getting kind of tight, you turn to your side and start walking down that way. You make it another about 40 feet um, before you feel like you are like, you feel like you've beaten his record already pretty easily. Um, um, by measuring the rope that is, that has left me, I can, I can tell that he's already beaten it. I'm like, yeah. shit. <laughs> Do you keep going, or are you going to turn around and head back? Yeah, I think I, I've proven my point. All right, you turn around, you walk back. Damn. Here's your 5 GP. Yep, I'll take that. All right, <laughs> All right. yep, I'll take it. Yep, that was it. That was it. Uh, so, <laughs> a fairly uneventful bet. <laughs> um, my bets are better. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I'm as go up there with Jessica and guess now. Okay. That. So as as the as the other anim, as the other gen, as the other gents are doing this, Jessica and Gath, as you walk up, um, you find yourselves um, you find yourselves following a pathway that leads up. As you reach uh, as you reach this corner right here, you hear the odd um, you hear the odd almost kind of sound of squeaks. Like, it's kind of what you hear, and you hear the scurrying of feet, like very quick feet over, um, over rocks and pebbles. Uh, uh, peek the corner. Yeah. Let's see what I see. How far is your uh, dark vision go? Sixty. Okay. Okay, so you can see very well into this area, and you see. <coughs> What appears to be about um, you see what appears to be five very large giant rodents, um, five or five to five to six large giant rodents. Uh, you see uh, uh, as the rodents are kind of just moving around and darting around. You see um, uh, two very distinct humanoids that are all kind of speaking. That are kind of speaking this guttural. Uh, Goblinoid, goblinoid language, the yum, 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 yum. Um, and you see a goblinoid individual uh, who's wearing um, black armor, black hair, and a ponytail, um, barefoot, and he seems to be kind of giving them orders. And you also see a uh, what appears to be a humanoid body currently um, laying on the ground at this point. So I turn back to <clears throat> turn back to Jessica, and I say. So it looks like we got a ton of rats, a few goblins, and a dead person. I think we All might right. be too late to save our. It's just one out of four. Um, there, there's okay goblins we can handle. Um, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and bless, bless some peeps. Go for it. Uh, I bless. Uh, um, Geth, Tomf, and. Well, I guess Dryden's still far behind, so we're on tour. All right. So, Geth, you said? Yep. Uh, Tonf and Brontor? Mm -hmm. Okay. Are all blessed. So, yeah. Uh, we lost Geth. We did? It says he's got to rejoin the call. Skype is lagging out. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wait, can you guys hear me now? Okay. Yeah, no, you yeah. Fine. fine. Yeah. There you go. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. So again, Everyone was skipping around. I missed that whole thing. <laughs> um, you got blessed. Um, you can roll an extra d4 to an attack or a saving throw. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So nice. do I? Do I have a clear shot at Hark in the back? Um. With the fact that the rodents are just constantly moving about, and considering he's probably about as tall as the rodents, uh, you might. It's gonna be. A, it's gonna be a disadvantage shot, though. Hmm. 
that the surprise round would be good. Okay. Well, so, oh. so with I think with surprise rounds you get advantage on it. So. Oh, so neutralize it. It would just be an it'd be a straight roll. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna whisper back to Tom and tell him to get up here too. Let's try and take a, a couple shots. All right. From the shadows. Now, do you have? Did you grab sharpshooter? I did grab sharpshooter. We don't have disadvantage from long shots. That's right. Or okay. cover. Or cover. So I didn't. So what was the the disadvantage from? Uh, it was a disadvantage. It was disadvantage. Oh, the, just the because, rats. Just because the rats are constantly scurrying anyway. Okay. No, that's fine. All right. So I'm I'm gonna line up a shot okay. directly at, at Hark in the back and wait for the exact moment that I have a clear shot. All right. Let me double we're check that. We're not in any sort of order right now, are we? No. I'm up. A surprise I'm up round. Yes, yeah, right now. So we haven't even rolled initiative yet. Could I do another action? I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait till we're closer. I'm, not, I'm actually too far anyway. Oh, our DM just lost power. Oh, did oh, no. he? So, Bye, everyone start dancing. Five minute break. <laughs> <laughs> so now, can, we could use a, a bio uh, anyway. Um, Five minute bio? Yeah, yeah I was going to say, some... do we want to do a five minute break real quick? Yeah. yeah. I'm drinking stuff. I'll sit here and entertain everybody. How's everyone doing? You got a, you got a splash <laughs> screen. Put the splash screen up. Uh, no, no, I can, I can hang out. It's all good. You, no, no, they can't see any of you anyway. Oh, no. Yep. <laughs> all right, be right back, guys. Yep. yep. Um, anyway, so this is unprecedented. I hope everything's all right in Shadow's household. Um, we, yeah, so things have been going great. This is, I, I, I let me just let me quickly, let me give a, wow, they really all just got up and left. Uh, <laughs> literally all four of them just got up and left. Um, so it's back. He's rebooting now. Good. That's what I want to hear. I just want to say at, at, at 28 years old, I never thought I'd be into Dungeons and Dragons. I kind of made a joke to Shadowhack before we started this that I wanted to guest. Like one week be something of an NPC kind of character who maybe came in and helped them with a session get through a certain cave. And at the last second, I kind of got talked into it by Rams and, and a couple other people in my life were like, nah, you should just try it. I jumped into it and said, Shadow, can I be a part of this? Can I, can I actually be a part of this group? And he said, please do. Uh, and I, I can't fix the cameras because Shadow's not in the call. So the, it's set up specifically to work when the, if I fix it now, I'll have to fix it when Shadow gets back in. Uh, what's up, Mill? So uh, I decided I asked him, can I be a part of this actual, uh, you know, full time? Can I be a part of your, your Dungeons and Dragons campaign that you're setting up? And he said, absolutely. They were excited to have me and I've had an absolute blast. I spend my whole week like these guys do thinking about this campaign. And uh, it's it's pretty great. I mean, I know ShadowCon, you've done this before, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, we were actually, the, where, what we had originally entertained the idea was, because um, Shadow was still kind of debating whether or not he'd be able to manage two campaigns, school, work, and all that, is doing an, uh, an alternative where he would take DM for certain weeks, and then if I needed to take care of things as, uh, like a backup, then I would have things set aside where we could roll in and still kind of progress in, in a game, but it wouldn't affect the main storyline if we wanted to do that. Gotcha. Uh, so that's what we had originally proposed. Um, and we, we went up talking about it and deep details outside of what's going on. Cause I don't want to give anything away, but we figured it'd be best for shadow to kind of be the main DM as far, as far as the continuation. And then I, if, if we need to, I could, I can substitute, but it'll kind of just be as a backup plan. If nothing else. Gotcha. Looks like he's trying to jump back in now. I think his internet's yep. uh, a little bit. Wonky at the moment. Ah, he's back. Sweet. Yeah, the words uh, are here. Yeah, we uh we have a weird our, our 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 house is weird to the point where it will occasionally flip like a single breaker like is controls like half the house, which is really stupid. Um, so we've been uh yeah. Whenever that happens, I have to run downstairs and make sure everything gets reflipped back on. 
But oh, and to be clear, so when people, if you're here and you've seen this happen before, where we dr we lose somebody from the call and all the cameras go wonky, it's literally a series of window captures that make this happen. This is a little streaming 101 kind of stuff. If you want to get into some complicated stuff, each single except yeah, including my webcam, every single one of these windows that you're seeing is a separate window capture. So fixing it would m take me 10 minutes to get everyone sorted out, and the second someone else joined the call, they'd all be screwed up again. So that's why when we lose somebody, I don't fix it, but I think that's why I'm going to keep this Skype call. So this is what it looks like on our end. Uh, this is just the straight up Skype call. Then when mm -hmm. things go awry and we lose one person, I can pull this up and everyone can still see everyone. It won't be as pretty, but it'll it'll do the job. And Shadow, uh, yeah. I can shoot you my recording through Google if you for your YouTube channel. Okay, cool. We can yeah, we can discuss that later on. Uh sweet. Uh so we're just waiting on the people who are actually attacking, so that's fine. Yeah. No, I'm here. <laughs> well, oh, well no, they, they we just decided to take a break. I figured I'd that's regale cool. them with a tale of how I decided to do Dungeons and Dragons. Uh well, I was gonna say we're glad that you jumped I'm 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 personally really glad that you jumped in. It's um it's I'm been, me too. It's hard to break uh, away from that mentality. Like when you watch, um, it, it, it's something that's been instilled in us by pop culture. Even in um, what was the show that just came out? Stranger Things. The yeah. kids that were all a group of nerds played Dungeons and Dragons. That was their hobby, and they were the unpopular kids at school. And that's been like the concept of what Dungeons and Dragons is for so long. Yeah. But now that I'm playing it, and I was I was I was weird in high school. I wasn't a nerd. I wasn't popular. I was somewhere in the middle, like most people. And yeah. uh, in college, same thing. I'm just a big personality, and so it's kind of hard to place me at times. But I would never have considered myself like that basement dwelling nerd who didn't have any friends. Now that I'm playing this, I'm like I feel it, you could reskin Dungeons and Dragons to be almost anything. And make people enjoy it. Like, if you're into football, you could reskin this to be like a college football simulator. And I feel like you get four guys together who would enjoy it. You know, like you could do this with yeah. almost anything if you're creative there's, enough. There, there's a lot of DMs who specifically do things like that, and that's the really fun part about I like about Dungeons and Dragons um, is that you can literally skin it to anything that you want to. Um, I have a buddy who I have a work buddy who he is uh, playing or he's creating his own Fallout campaign. Um, oh, that that's is, so cool. That, that uses the same, basically the same uh, rules that we use for D and D five e, um, which if you guys are ever looking for the player's handbook, it looks like this. Um, it's really kind of a cool thing, but it uses the, all the same mechanics, all the same rules, and everything. It's just set within the world of Fallout, uh, Fallout four, and the Fallout universe. Um, and he's uh, basing it in Cincinnati, which is where we live. Um, so they're going to be his, him and his group are going to be running around the Cincinnati like af like in a Fallout kind of timeline um and he's already got like the foes scaled up he's home brewing a ton of it it's it, you literally can rescale to whatever you want like if you want to do one where it's like oh hey i want to go and explore outer space and we where we have spaceships and we have laser pistols instead of you know axes and bows and arrows yeah you can totally do that um so if you're ever thinking about jumping into a DD game it's literally just the, the the question isn't what can i be it's what do you want to be that's that's the biggest thing that you can do and really kind of like go in, if you ever decide to go into a D&D game. What do you want to do? What do you want to be? What world do you want to go jump in and play in? And if you can find a group that plays it. Um, I know that's it sounds like I, immediately my brain takes me so many. Like, I'm not even a huge Bioshock fan, but I feel like the Bioshock Infinite Universe would be like such a cool place to do a D&D campaign, you know? Yeah, so the, you could do anything if you had if you had a DM that was committed enough to whatever your you, the idea was, you could do anything. I think that's so cool. It's, and that's it, that's what they they kind of focus is that they say it's 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 a guidebook more so than like a rule set. Is that it's meant as a basis for you to adapt into your own personal wants, desires for your group, how you want to run. Like even like you were saying, you could do a Fallout, you could do Bioshock. You know, we had. People talking about doing what was it? Uh, Dark Tower. Storms is wanting to do a Dark Tower run, um, and it's just a point where you're allowed to kind of venture off and have fun and do something that is personal to you and to your group, and you, to have fun with it. Because that's, I mean, really, that's just it's. 
I mean, I always view D and D as it's a basis for you to it's a it's a fun social interaction. Like you could some people can take it very seriously, and you can get really detailed as far as the the intricacies of how the the game runs. But when to me, when it boils down, it's it's just as a platform for you to be imaginative, be creative, have fun with it, make decisions that are really dumb so that you could see what the outcome is, or go try and be the gallant, 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 whatever, the gallant hero who tries to do everything to epic proportions, like just basically fulfilling whatever kind of desire you want to be. And I, I think that's what's great about it. Yep. <clears throat> Speaking of All heroes, right. I'd like to remind everyone that I've attempted or possibly definitely saved Geth twice tonight. Just want to put that out there. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> honestly, we could talk. Honestly, we could talk and talk about like the different the different things, and that could honestly be a podcast discussion for sometime later on in the future. But let's get yeah. back into tonight's session. Uh, back into it. So, Geth and uh, Toph, you guys are both uh, lining up your shots. Um, you both wait for a moment. I'm going to put on some appropriate battle music here because we are re-entering combat. <laughs> Sorry. You guys wait for the perfect perfect moments to fire, and you both do roll attacks. All right. All right. I'm going to do and dead eye. Go for it. The. Um. I'm just going to do an attack. I was going to say I'm going to try and do a sharpshoot. I'm just going to do a regular attack. Yeah, I'm I'm feeling lucky. I'm going to do a sharpshooter. Yeah. Alright, so I got 22. 22. Oh, wait. Oh, dis disadvantage, right? No, normal. Uh, since you took Sharpshooter, you're normal, I believe. Yeah. I've got so, a okay. 13. Alright. So I believe that 13 will hit. <clears throat> nice. Let me, let me double check that, though. I'm rejoining as my GM because. Roll 20 wants to be weird with his name. All right. We're in no hurry. We're good. And in okay. the back of my mind, I had put a hunter's mark on uh, <laughs> on Hark. Okay. Just just as so it was just FYI. Yeah, so we all are on the same basis here. All right. So uh so okay, 13 misses unfortunately against um against uh against Hark. Uh, how much damage did you roll? Like curiosity, five, no six. Sixteen. Me? Oh no no, no. hold on. Okay, so you rolled a thirteen in total, Geth. Yep. Right, for so sixteen you, damage. For sixteen damage, nice. And then Tom, you actually managed to hit with the twenty-six, nice. All right. All okay. right. So. Uh, nice. Oh and no. Then Hunter's mark. Yep, Hunter's mark damage. Y'all are blessed. Uh oh, we're we're blessed. I'm gonna add that. I was so, supposed to say, you can add that to the attack roll if you want to. So, one. So, what? Six damage for me? Okay. And so I'm up to uh, a 16 to hit. 16 will still miss, unfortunately. So, <laughs> as you're, as you're, uh, as you, as both of you fire, a loud concussiveness explodes throughout this entire tunnel, nearly deafening a little, pretty much all of you at that point, as the sounds of this um, little mechanical pistol that um, Geth has created uh, just explodes with the cacophony of sound. Uh, the bullet actually ends up, uh, one of the rats ends up actually like scurrying just as you're, just as you fire, catching the bullet, <laughs> uh, um, dealing uh, full points of seven damage uh, or, yeah, dealing a full points of seven damage to it. Um, Ending its ending it as as it as it kind of moves across there, so and it collapses to the ground. Oh. I'll take it. Now I have a question. Uh, yes. Is he five feet within another creature? Yes. Okay, so I have the horde breaker perk. Okay. So once per turn, I can make a weapon attack against another creature with the same weapon against as long as they're within five feet of it. Okay. Yes. Um. You, where you're at, you don't have line of sight on another, like, you have line of sight on the creature, but it's going to be a really weird shot to try and get it. So, because I can see, because I'm, so I can see him, I can't see this guy over here? Yeah, unfortunately. Okay, so, okay. All right. Okay. So, Never mind. Can I, I see them asking. taking shots at stuff? You can see them taking shots at stuff at this point. You guys have all kind of made it up into that kind of bottleneck area. And okay. it's at this point that I need everyone to roll initiative. Uh, okay. Roll for initiative. Right. 
Here we Row go. for initiative, suckers! Initiative! Yeah, I've done better. Welcome to I'm Bunkers still beating Dash. everyone. 18. 18. Oh, God, <laughs> Brontor! <laughs> okay. Oh, rip. He was like, and four. Brontor just wants me to know, because I beat him in our little sparring match, that he is still <laughs> here. He was like, here, notice baby. me, Dryden. We're going away. <laughs> just go. I've got seven. Is Jessica gonna roll for initiative? I'm sorry, she 17. She did. Oh, she I did. did. Yeah, 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 never mind. You're right. right. I see you there. Let me get full up this again. One of these, I'm actually be more prepared for this type of stuff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, it's a eight, nine, ten. It's uh, taking some measurements. Don't mind me. Goblins are going at the top. Right, so we never should have okay. given her the ruler. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Area things, right? All right. So as as Geth and as Geth and Tom both take their fires uh, or take their shots, the bullet uh, damaging and killing one of the rats, um, the arrow actually flying through like with a very perfect shot, just flying through all the rats as they as some of them just leap out of the way just as the bolt just passes right by them. The bolt embeds itself in the uh, upper in the upper shoulder of Hark. He lets out a howl. <sighs> Um, uh, he barks out some orders that brings us to the top of the initiative round. The goblins are up. Um, Damn! Uh, uh, Hark is going to shout out something in uh, Goblin. He's going to shout out uh, One of the goblins turns and races back this way. So get there. To the dark. This one is going to move in front here, and Hark is going to take up a defensible position over here. Um, all right. This brings us to. Uh, let me see. Does he have view on you guys? He does. He's going to take a. He's going to take an attack against Tom, who he can see. No. No. And like this, is out, this is why we never put Tom in the front. Nine. <laughs> you dirty goblins. Yeah, damn yeah. dirty apes. That's gonna be a thirteen yeah, to hit. That's gonna, be a, apes. that's gonna be a thirteen to hit Tomp. Uh thirteen will hit. Okay. That is a uh, total of seven points of piercing damage as you see as the as you see as the goblin pulls the short bow out and fires a bolt. Uh you managed to just kind of you managed to sl like kind of dodge out of the way Woo as the bolt just uh scrapes across uh, your armor and through actually just ducking right past some of the ribs, um, missing your skin within a hair's breadth. But, oh, boy, that could have been ended badly. All right. This brings us to Dryden. Dryden, ah. what do you do? All right. Um, well, I need to use my ruler. Oop. Ah, okay. Well, sh Nikes. Did the goblins move at all? They moved backward a little bit. Backwards. Okay. Crap. Um, because for some reason I'm all the way back here. I don't know why I'm all the way back here, but I'm all the way back here. Uh, because you guys were having a uh, a contest. Yeah, but Tom was part of I that don't. contest, and he's way up there. St I don't know. Whatever. I don't know. Anyways, um, I'm gonna move up all the way to there. Okay. Because I ain't afeard, afri afeard. I ain't afraid of nobody. I ain't afraid of nobody. Okay, so I ain't afraid of nobody. I ain't afraid of nobody. I ain't afraid of no rat. Okay, so we got a goblin, and what's this guy all the way in the back? Like at the top uh, up here. Hark. Hark. That'd be Hark. That is Hark. Ah. That's the Hark. Hark that you saw that in is, the woods. That is the Hark. Well, he's got my, my 12 gold and one silver, which I yep. know he didn't give to his mom. As you as you as you round that corner and as the giant rats are just scurrying around kind of your midsection, you glance up and you can see two small humanoids. Um, you see two you see the goblin that you met last night, Hark, in the black leather armor, and you see another goblin, not in as much armor, but currently currently advancing on a woman um, who is backed up into what appears to be a jail, some form of like alcove 
and the other goblin has a scimitar out. Um, as you glance at the scimitar, you see that there is a slight bit of crimson blood that is already on the blade itself. It, okay, just on an un, not to break the immersion here, but uh, it took me a second to figure out that that is upside down. <laughs> I was like, I was like, what the hell am I looking at? What does at? that look like? So that that this this is a goblin just like this goblin, but upside down. Just worth it, noting. It, it's pointing the direction that he's facing. <laughs> all right, I just was like, what in the shit? All right, um, all, right Dryden. all right, with my move then, if that is the case, I'm going to take one of my javelins and I'm going to throw it at Goblin with bloody scimitar in the back. Is that javelin. Javelin. Um, yeah, oh, you, I... you're, you're, higher, you're higher than that, so you'll be able to hit him. Yeah. yeah. You're, 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 you're up high enough that you're, yeah, you're over the rats. Sweet. Uh, yeah, 19 will hit. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and eight damage, eight piercing damage. Nice, nice. So I'd like, I'd like to think, with knowing with my strength and uh, the distance and my ability to throw this thing really freaking far, that I was able to throw it hard enough to pin him against a wall. So you, you take the javelin and, and just chuck it as far as you can. It just goes straight through his torso, protruding out the other side um, with enough force that as he's advancing, he doesn't even like his body. Uh, basically, you're basically if the woman, the woman who's who's currently cowering in front of him, looking up, just sees the da just sees the javelin protruding from him as his body just goes <laughs> right into the wall and just kind of limply hangs there. Nice. Dope. Beast. I, 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 I like it. I'm down. All right. And that's your action, your movement. Do you want a bonus action? Um, my... As my bonus action, I do my best to scare away the rats in a backwards direction. Like a, a bug -a -bug -a -bug -a kind of thing. Make an intimidation check. <laughs> I'm pretty intimidating. That'll do it. If I, yeah, I'm pretty damn intimidating, if I'm being honest. Yo, there's scope! So fucking scared! Oh yeah, I'm scary as shit, man. Intimidated. <laughs> Yo, intimidated. <laughs> you know that your ancestors, the true ogres, some also the true ogres, and some of them, even claiming to be descendants from Oni, scared little children back in times of old. You do your best impersonation as you can, and the rats, while on a primal level, are rats they stop in their foot tracks and begin to backpedal as quickly as they can up the uh, up the cave um all right jessica you're up all right um <clears throat> i'm going to hold on i gotta measure again um um and then crap sorry you're fine I feel like this should, the, the measuring, I'm not trying to take away from our team, but I feel like that should be an investigation check or something instead of just us knowing all these measurements. But maybe that's just part of the evolution right, of the just game. just wait down. I'm moving wait, here. Go. Okay. Oh, not on top of them. That's awkward. Oof. There we go. Hold up. Oh. Hold up. Hold up. Hey, Jessica. In order to yeah, move together. yeah. How are you I'm doing? I'm going to do a calm person's spell. Um, attempt to get this guy and this guy calm. Okay. So you're attempting to get the human, the human female in back and Hark calm. No, no, no. Hark and the goblin calm. The other goblin's dead. He did. This guy? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, okay, you can do that. Okay, yeah. Uh oh. Yeah. Uh, all I right, go ahead do and it. roll. Go ahead and roll. What do I roll for that? Um, shit. Spell said I'm not familiar with. Um, it's calm person, right? Calm, oh, sorry, calm emotions. Calm emotions, all right. Uh, let's see here. Charisma saving throw. All right. That's a three and a ten. What's your What's your save DC? What's, the, um, what's your what's your spell DC? My spell DC is 
8 plus coho plus proficiency. I don't realize my own notes. It's uh, 8 plus your proficiency, so that's 8 plus 2, so that's already 10. 10. Uh, plus con? Consti- yeah, constitution. constitution, so 1, so 11. Okay, so they both fail. Okay, nice. Oh. <laughs> and then, so as my bonus action, I'm going to do a sanctuary on the human female, which right. is, you have to do a wisdom to in order to hurt her. Okay. Nice. Nice. I think that's right. Let me just double check because it's the new one. I'm glad I prepped it. Yeah, wisdom saving throw. Nice. I like it. And then I'm going to oh. use my last five to move this way. All right, gotcha. Cool. <laughs> so, as you uh, as you rush up, you are you you grasp your holy you grasp your holy symbol, muttering under your breath. Uh, you see a divine glow emanate from the point farther up that you wanted to, and you see both the goblin the goblin humanoids just their body like their bodies go from this kind of very aggressive stance to this more kind of lax and relaxed stance at this point, and then. And then you also take your holy symbol. You point it at the direction of the at, of the other human farther and back, and you just uh, you see a very kind of gold and almost silvery glow kind of uh, form around her. Um, and she just looks down at her hands and as she's sitting as she's sitting on the ground. What? What? That's about all we can do. That brings us anything else? I did everything. everything. Yeah, you're up. All right, so this guy has a 16 at least, or a 17 at least AC. I'm going to move up to this, and I'm going to take another shot. Oh, wait, does hit, does damage uh, remove calm person or calm emotions? Uh, they would get it? they would get a opportunity to they would get an opportunity to uh, save to save again. Uh, okay, never mind. I'm just going to blast these. Uh, uh, rats away. Blast the rats, go for it. Blast I'm go the rats. For that one right there. Go yeah. for it. Rat blast. Yeah, that'll hit. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. Yeah, boy. All right. You you take your you take your gun with another just loud boom. Uh, you see the bullet enter through the through the midsection of the of the rat and actually blow out part of the other side. It as it kind of like hobbles, trying to get closer, it's barely hanging on at this point. Um, nice. All right. Uh, anything else? Um, no, that's it. All right. So this. All right. So the. All right. So this rat is going to move here. So it's gonna move farther down. This one's going to move pretty much right up on you. Get him there. Boop. All right. So the rats are going to make some attacks Aren't here. Are they scared of me? I thought I scared him off. Oh, that's right, you did. Fuck. Never Yo, mind. get it. Pay attention. <laughs> Yo, Play I'm your players. I'm your king now, bitch. Players <laughs> reminding the DM what they're doing. So yeah. So that rat has to spend its turn getting away from you. This rat has to spend its turn getting away from you. They cannot willingly move closer. Gotcha. All right. That's all they can do. Well, fuck. I did not do. <laughs> See, sometimes guys, Pops. I'm useful. Outside of just insulting <laughs> Hark at the back. Tom, of the- what are you doing? All right, um, I'm going to slide in here a little bit more. And uh, phrasing, I'm just <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm gonna just peg some of those rats that were running away. Go for it. So I'm just gonna hit that one. Um, which one? Uh, the one in the front. I think he hit oh, that one. Oh yeah. I'm okay. pretty sure he hit. <laughs> yeah, that'll hit. <laughs> so that one, and then I'm going to use the whore breaker and hit the rat next to him as well. All right. The the rat next to the rat behind him? Yeah. I yeah, think that's going to hit too. <laughs> All right. Damn. So, nice. As you as you uh as you ra- as you race forward pulling as you race forward pulling out your uh pulling out your longbow, you take aim and you see where the rat, you see where the first rat is, you fire. The bolt just goes straight, punches straight through the entire body of the of the rat, not killing it, but leaving a decent sized hole. And as the bolt passes through the body, it goes right into the skull, like the foreheads of the rat behind it. 
and lodging there. The back, the rat at the back falls dead. The other one is looking really rough. Um, the rat on stick. <laughs> <laughs> Top of the round, Goblin's turn. Uh, they have to make their save again. They? How many goblins? Damn, are we Bronto don't about? get to go. Bronto, you're at the top. Do I not have you go at the top of the round? Nope. Oh shit. Okay. I haven't well. gone yet. All right. Well, Bronto, then. Matt. <laughs> get out. Wow, of here. We don't want get you. your shit together. Well, all I can do is like move up <laughs> to can't. here, right? Apparently. Yes, I believe so. All right, and then I'll ready. <clears throat> I'll ready my crimson right. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Now goblins. Jeez, I can't roll with their saves. Were shit. Okay, so they both fail their saves, so they're both still there, just lax, just kind of dumbfounded look on their faces. Um, the woman is going to continue to back up a little bit more into the cave. Uh, brings us... So, because this, this will now bring us to Brontor's turn. Dope. All right, we're going to move up to here. <clears throat> I'm going to swing my hammer with the crimson right. Okay. So 14 plus 4. 18. That'll hit. Dope. So 1d10. Uh, 2 plus 2, but if I roll a 1 or a 2 with my cleansing right. No, hold on. With my greater weapon fighting style, if I roll a one or a two, I can re-roll my attack die. Yep. So that's four plus two, six. And then I have a D4, nine. Nine total? Yep. All right. You ju- you take your axe and just with one overhand swing, boom, just crush its entire skull into the ground. Just splattering the uh, ground with brain, gray matter, blood. It's just, it's it's a piece of art. Um, and with the great weapon master, if I hit a critical hit with my melee attack, okay, I get another melee attack. Okay, that's not a critical hit. That was a uh, that was just a death blow. Critical hit is like a twenty. Or it says, uh, hold on, uh, on your turn when you score a critical hit with a melee weapon or reduce a creature to zero hit points. Okay, yep, you do have another attack if you can, Sweet. If you can get to it. All right, and I'm going to take a negative five penalty on an attack roll. Are you attacking the goblin? Yes. Okay. And if I miss with, or if I hit with that, I get plus ten to my attack. Great, go for it. Uh, seven minus two, uh, four. Is that <laughs> no. hit? No. No. Okay, then I don't get a hit. So as as you as you finish just slamming this rat into the ground, you look at the goblin and you just. Just completely whiff over its head as it just is kind of like sl- awkwardly swaying their back and forth, uh, still <laughs> underneath the influence of Jessica's calm person spell. No, all right, Dryden, you're up. Nice, uh, Jessica. Yeah. So I I give no fucks about rats, right? Like no fucks. So That's I so get right up, <laughs> right up in uh, Hark's Hark. Hark, yeah. Hark, yeah. Hark's face. And I say, remember me? And then I roll for my greatsword. And fail. Oh, wait. No, I didn't. Oh, you right? don't. Oh, you no, I don't. I, I saw, the, the, I saw the, the other ones, and I was like, three and four. Yeah. Oh, I'm done. And I, nice. I just. Oh, oh, shit. I'm raging, by the way, this turn. Yep. I'm raging. Okay. So that's plus so two. So you, you as a bonus action rage, you. And you just rush up towards him. You take your great axe. Just yelling, remember me, and just cleaves uh, into him. Nice. Uh, plus nine. two, you said. Yeah, nine so damage. Nine. Nice. Uh, you just you just bring the great axe right down uh, into his collarbone, and it just sinks a good like almost like foot into his like into his collarbone chest cavity. He looks at. <laughs> Even with that, 30. he still doesn't make his save for the calm person. So as your as your axe is just in his body at this point, he still just has this dumb look across his face as he's just kind of swaying back. And Wait, forth. do I get a crit on him because he's in calm? I don't think. Um, prop not on That's, this. We, it, we it got it on. The, we got it on the. Uh, that was if. Okay. That was if he's incapacitated. Brontor looks up and sees and goes. Ooh. <laughs> as, that was, that was, <laughs> 
at oh, this point. Oh, shit? That's, that's blood's just... Blood's girl. just... Cool. <laughs> Damn. I, don't uh, know. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> that's pretty. Do I do anything else? Do I want to do anything else? Are you doing mm-hmm. anything else? So the bonus action, I believe. No, he raged with it. I oh no, you raged. Yeah, raged. I, I, yeah, I raged with it, and I, I mean, I oh, I have movement, right? You can move. Uh, yeah. Wait, wait. How far did I move? Well, now you give them an opportune attack. I well, moved, no, he's calmed. I move fifteen feet. I move wait, another. Fi- I move uh, my other fifteen feet. Can I? Do I have fifteen more feet? Yeah, you got fifteen more feet. To to Where? to the woman. Okay, so the rat will get a cha- an attack of opportunity against you, Rolson. Bad. So nothing? It rolls a... Um, actually, it rolls a 14, surprisingly. To, is that to hit or damage-wise? Yeah, 14 to hit. I have an armor class of 17, so... Yeah, you have an armor <laughs> class of 17? It was 16, and then I when I upgraded my constitution, it goes up to 17. <laughs> nice. Yep! <laughs> yep, yeah. So, no... So I don't as you take just, damage. As, as you as you as you just race by, the rat sinks its teeth into you, but the muscles just flex uh, on 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 its legs. The muscles just flex, and you actually feel a kink as you're pretty sure you just broke your muscles just broke the rat's tooth uh, as it tried to take a bite of you. <laughs> That's brutal. That's Yo, what you this boss. Ratatouille, <laughs> fuck off. Dryden's like, is this the way to where the uh, chick we're trying to save is? Yeah, Jessica, way? you're up. <laughs> I smell <laughs> ovaries. So I think it's over here. <laughs> Jessica, you're up. All right. Um... <clears throat> All right. Blue she show. she sees someone in need. She she gets a little pissed. Um, she's Jim going to you, move here. Go, nope. Jessica. Um. Uh, so my fire breath, the cone, is it a, like a singular cone or is it spread? It's a spread. So it's like a cone from where you're standing. Yeah, then I'm going to go ahead and, and get in front of these two guys. Oh, nope, these two guys. Nope. Where are you going? And try to cone these guys. Cone them. Cone the two the two rats? Yep. I'm not even sure what to roll with that. Go ahead and roll an attack. Roll I think button. it's an attack plus your... Uh, <laughs> God, we should really have this written down somewhere. If only there was a tome that told us how things worked. <laughs> I have it here. I have it here. I got it already. PHP? Um, it's a 15 foot. It's a deck. Okay, so it's a deck stay. So. Oh, never mind. You don't roll. It's that's just. Yeah, I don't roll. It's just a hit. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> no. <laughs> they gonna do a saving throw? Yeah. No. Um. Go ahead and uh, uh, 2d6. Um, yeah, 2d6. Okay. Okay. It doesn't increase until 6 level. Yep, go ahead and roll 2d6. Not bad. So, uh, Jessica just lets out this. Um, just a torrent of fire from her mouth um, as it actually ends up singeing both of the rats uh, fur and ends up actually igniting both of them on fire as flames just continue to begin just to lick around their bodies. Uh, yeah. All right. Anything else, Jessica? Um, I'm going to go ahead and move back. Oh, wait, no. Um, bonus action yep. and then move. So bonus action is going to be to remind... In, a, in my booming a thermaturgy voice, we gotta question this guy. Box and scroll, we gotta question this guy. And then I'm gonna move. Wee. All right. Bark. All right. So you're moving out of melee with the rats, so they get a tax of opportunity against you. Unless you're oh running. shit! Then now I'm gonna move up just over here. There's, I'm still in like their melee, right? Um. You'll be in melee with one of them. You'd want to probably just probably stick where you were okay, at. Okay, I'll just stick right here. Whatever. I'm the worst with attacks of opportunity. It's all right. <laughs> all right. Uh, Geth, you're up. Let's go, Geth. Right. I'm going to go right here. And seeing the torrent of blood that's coming out of Hark here, I'm going to attempt to wound him just shy of fatally. 
<clears throat> All right. And so I'm going to uh, use Deadeye okay. and Sharpshooter again. Okay. And we got a... Oh, damn. Holy shit. <laughs> a, a 22 to hit. Uh, heart. Oh, that'll hit. And a 24 <laughs> for damage. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> damn. Here he go. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was great knowing you. You know he so, did. So, Geth, how do you want to do this? <laughs> Oh, sadly, with shame. How can he li- with I don't a lot think of shame. You can live from that. You can, you can, you can make it. You can make it non-life threatening if you want to. You can make it so, like, the, as like, however you want to describe it, you can make it so it's non-life threatening. Like a McCree sh- six-shot burst. Sort of. All right. Um, I'm going to shoot his uh, um, just above his thigh on his leg. To try and wound him to where he falls straight down and stays and the down. The carotid? <laughs> no, not the carotid. I'm gonna try and <laughs> miss that, but so immobilize him. Just above his knee. All right. Yeah. All right. So, as you adv- as you advance forward, pistol out, you just take aim and fire off fire off one shot. The bullet just enters right into his upper thigh, and you see an explosion of just sinew and bone just explode from his upper thigh he he ends up falling down to the ground like falling down to one knee almost kind of been like uh uh falling down to one knee and that knee does that leg can no longer support him so he ends up falling onto his just flat on his ass at this point and he rolls to see if he can save from that and rolls a natural one still oh. sits there just with a dazed look over his face he's holding on by one hit point oh Bronter's over here going <laughs> oh, dirty yeah, damage though that was max damage just so you guys know that was yeah that was you uh that was you saying that was you being like nope okay we're not gonna kill him but we're just gonna incapacitate him so he is now incapacitated but he is he's he's, he's bleeding out at this point um Brontor's right. loving this carnage. I, I'm gonna tell you. Starting to wonder about Brontor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Just so the rats here. And then wait, I'm, I'm oh. gonna use Axon Surge to Go get for another it. shot. <laughs> and I'm gonna I'm gonna turn to Brontor where he's in front of this other goblin. I'm gonna say, "Well, watch this." And I'm gonna pop this other goblin and with another dead eye, but Go not sharpshooter. Got it. Go for it. Uh, no, you're not. <laughs> so wait, what? Eighteen to hit. Yeah, he is. Wait. Wait. How the hell did that happen? What? You rolled a three. Oh. Yeah, I rolled a three on the first one, and then an, um, also you're blessed too. A so ten at that. on the other one. Oh, Do you yeah, have advantage? He's, he's I'm blessed. I'm using dead eye. Yeah, dead eye gives him some crazy shit. Oh damn! All right. I get Do advantage it. on dead eye, so ten damage. You get a D4 if you wanted to. Yeah. I'm pretty sure an 18 will hit him. Yeah, 18 hits. Ooh. Uh, Tam damage, you said? Yep. So as the other dr- goblin is just th- standing there swaying, you don't you don't even have to like look at him. You just walk you just walk up, say your catchphrase to Brontor, place the gun right against the temple, and just the entire side of his head is just blown out the other side. He just drops. <laughs> Boop. Double kill. Nice. Wow. I feel like at this point, I Ooh. just need to sit back and sip on my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Bronter's right. amazed at the different trajectories that these bullets are coming at and just nailing these different beings. All right, uh, brings us to the rat's turn. This one's going to move up here because it is still afraid of Dryden. It's going to move over here. Doop. And then all three of those are going to make attacks against Jessica. This one's going to make an attack against Brontor. No. Jesus, I'm rolling like shit tonight. Okay, um, so Seven. the first, yes. so the, so Jessica, the first one, the first one is a six to hit. Seven. The Are second. AC? One, yeah. Wow. The second Shut one up. is a. <laughs> the second one is a twelve. The third mm. one is a six. Okay. So only one of them hits. 
Actually, no goblins. You take uh one d four. Take three points of piercing damage as as the as like one, as like just a few of the claws just come striking out at you. You just manage to whoop, hello, nope, no no, and just manage to dodge out of all the way except for one which scrapes past it and actually managed to like catch uh, part of your scales and uh, almost kind of rip one off. But man, but you look down. It's like okay, still there. We're good. Um, Tom, you're up. All right. Um, so. The only ones, so the two, the other two goblins are dead, and the and Hark is looking pretty rough, is what we've said. Hark's, Hark's looking pretty rough, but he's like he, he's literally just can't. He's at one hit point at this point. Okay, he's probably about as incapacity as you're gonna get. And Dryden, so is Jessica within five feet of him? Uh, of Hark, no. Okay, well I'm gonna shoot Hark then. Okay. Um. With uh, the sharpshooter, well, Ark has one HP, right? Yeah, yeah. he has one. We're he has one hit point. Oh, him. we're trying to save him. What a question, them, right? I mean, that, I, I, I speak I to Tom. I speak to Tom and Halfling, like, hey, wait, just wait. <laughs> yeah, as, hey, one of the hey, as, one of the rats. As as you as you're as you're taking aim at Hark, uh, you just hear uh, in the Halfling language, Brontor go, what? Don't do it. All right. Well, then I'm gonna just shoot the rats then. Your head, your as your head turns, your arm turns and fires the threats. All right, so I was skipped in this whole rotation. I'm now realizing. So, anyway, anyway, you're next. You're next. I think I don't know. We'll get you. Um, so I'm shooting work? one rat, and then I'm shooting the the rat next to him. No, you weren't. Okay, so four to the one right next to Hark, and then eight to the one next to him. Uh. Okay, you go racing forward up so that you're just like directly in line with them. You take your you take your you take your longbow and just um, uh, take your longbow. You find a place on the wall. You fire. The arrow goes and actually hits the wall. Rickish bounces to the side and goes straight through both the hearts of both of the rats, sticking in the second one. Now it's it's two separate attacks. Oh, it is? The Horde Breaker? Yeah, it's two separate attacks. Okay, make your second. Well, they both hit regardless, so. Yeah, yeah. Oh. No, I rolled twice. Oh. Yeah. No, they, so, that's that's just the way I'm describing it, because it's easier okay. to do that. Uh, I was just letting you know, so that the, when future, I do the Horde future. Breaker, yeah, it's actually two separate attacks. In future, as you're taking two arrows, going. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. I'm like, just so that. damn good, I know how to ricochet an arrow. Yeah, I mean, it's, oh. it's, it's more fun. It's more fun that way. All right, top of the round. Hark is literally can't do shit. Brontor. Uh, I'm gonna run up to Hark and wait. No, uh, we're waiting on. We're holding on him. Wait. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go against. Wait, I'm gonna go against. Where is Brontor's turn? Where, where did I go in this rotation? I, ro I rolled a 17, bro. I the last round I had Brontor right. go twice because okay. I skipped him on the first round. So yeah, he, yeah he skipped. It me. went. It went Brontor, Goblins, Brontor. Um, this time it went. It went Tom. It, it was the actual round. So you're after Brontor. But I've only. All gone. right, I'm gonna move there and then sledge this. Oh, I Rat twice, in the right. head with my hammer. Okay, attack roll. Uh, 15 plus 4, 19. That'll hit. And then it's 1d10. Uh, 1, but I since I have my great weapon fighting style, if I have a 1 or a 2, I get a reroll. And that's another one, so that's good. And you also add your strength modifier, I believe. Uh, yep. So three plus strength to five. Total five. Blessed and blessed. And I'm and blessed plus another. If you a, a if D4, you undo right? the D four, yep. Uh, that's four, nine. Yep. You just hit. You just once again, and j you once again just finishing after your attack, just boom, just right into the rat, and just eviscerate his body as well. Oop. I enjoyed that. Yep. Uh, Dryden, you're up. Sweet. All right. I'm going to move the three steps over back to Hark. All right. <laughs> With my action, I'm going to take everything he owns. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, 
Go ahead and make tell me everything Hark owns. Uh, make an investigation check. What do you mean make an investigation check? He can't move. All right, fine. Make an investigation check. You're 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 literally patting him down. That's what I thought. Give me all my give me all my shit. Fourteen. Oh, it's oh, that's right. My investigation is negative one. Never mind. <laughs> I, I was scrolled up and I was looking at something that said like twenty two, and I'm like, yeah, nope, nope, fourteen. That's not gonna get uh, everything. You find on your body, you find oddly enough, um, the, the the gold that he took from you last night. Oddly enough, you don't find the silver piece. Hey, um, he paid his mom. <laughs> Oh my God, um, <laughs> and you. <f> <laughs> uh, and you also find uh, um, he. Uh, are you, you also? <laughs> you also find a small bronze locket that is uh, currently hung around his neck at this point. Bronze, bronze. Okay. And if you want to strip him, you can take his leather armor too. I don't want his armor. It smells funny. Um, so that's that's what he's got. Cool. Very good. Um, with my so got. what's that? That's what he's got. Okay. With my bonus action, I I I do you know this thing when you're a kid, and I flick his ear, and okay. then I move back to the lady. He finally comes out of the <laughs> of the uh, of the calm of the calm the calm emotion spell. And looks around and is like, what the? Realize what that, what the? Is all he gets out before the pain just hits him. He's just like, <laughs> why do we think this is so funny? <laughs> and he passes out in just absolute pain. <laughs> Still alive, but passes out in just pain. Uh, Roger looks over there like, all right. All right. Okay. <laughs> just good. What are you doing? Got a single rat. I'm going to um, use my staff of Bahamut on the rat. Go for it. Do uh, it. Which I rarely use. Ooh. Ooh. Ready. Pretty good roll. Nice. It's, it's actually a very powerful weapon. I just don't like to hurt things, so. <laughs> That'll hit. Uh, and then what do I do? I never hurt. Did you put the damage on it? I guess I didn't. Quarter uh, staff does. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. I think it's a D6. Quarter staff does like a D6. It. A D6 of bludgeoning damage. So yeah. Eh. Oh. <laughs> As as Jessica rushes, <laughs> after, after, as Jessica has finished breathing with fire, and as all the other rats are just kind of around, all around her, like have just crumpled. Uh, Jessica looks down at this one rat and just look, looks up at Hark. Looks down at the rat. Looks back up at Hark, and just like and just like like hits it, it, it hits it in the temple with the butt of her staff. <laughs> it just crumples down to the ground. <laughs> Jeez. <clears throat> So, uh, I'm gonna use my bonus action just to get near near Hark. Well, so as Jessica finishes that, you all converge on Hark, and in this back area, we are now out of combat. So, okay. Well, then I'm gonna yay! Good job, guys. Yes. Um, let's, I guess ah oh, fuck. No, Jessica would, would, would help the lady before questioning. Someone else has to do the questioning. So I'm going to go to the lady and ask her, um, are you hurt? You just uh, constantly just cramping my style. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to get it in. So is uh, Hark, is he still alive? He is still alive. He's unconscious. I go over and tie him up. Okay. You go over and tie him up. Um, yep. Hog time, nice and good, like. Mm -hmm. Okay. She looks over to you and says, uh, as, as she looks up at Dryden, as um, as uh, as he's uh, as he's like kind of standing there protecting her, and says, uh, and as as the as the fighting finishes, she looks up, but Dryden says, "Thank you. Who who are you?" I'm Dryden Kell. 
And I'm here to save you. Hi there. I'm Dryden Kell. <laughs> Kell. Dryden Kell. You should see the dongus I've got. <laughs> <laughs> it is now eight feet long. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I, actually. So- I don't actually mention the dongus for the record. <laughs> I'm sorry. What's eight feet long? Uh, <laughs> uh, My ego. D and D cards against humanity. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, she says, uh, Dryden, thank you. Um, have Have you seen? Have you, have you seen uh, Have you seen Daphne? Is she still alive? I turn to Jessica and say, "Go find Daphne. I've got this." <laughs> I I ask the lady again after giving Dryden a significant look. <laughs> um, this is the look that you give me most of the time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, are you hurt? Uh, she looks down at the now fading platinum glowing uh, ward that is around her um, as it fades and her physical appearance regains the normal physical appearance of a human. She says, I don't, I don't think so. Okay. Then I, I will leave you to it. And I go, um, over have you here. Seen- oh, bye. Have you sorry. <laughs> Did you do something? <laughs> <laughs> Jessica's kind of, <laughs> just, just like, like I'll leave you to it, and just walks out, and then is like, and as she's trying, but uh, to, yes, <laughs> she's like, <laughs> yes. Sorry, uh, could you could you describe Daphne? Very pretty name, by the way. She uh, she had chestnut brown hair. Um, she little little older than me. Um, she had she had a. Uh, she had a mole on her neck, and she kind of points to where it was, uh, or where it is, um, and uh, green, green eyes. Okay. Well, there, there unfortunately is um, someone down in the other room, so I will go check on there on that person. Wait, there's, and- there's someone, there's someone down, and she just rushes out into the other room, uh, past you all, um, and uh, as she gets over to the body, she, you see, uh, as she has, she, she says no. No, Daphne, Daphne. And she rolls the person over and she just is like, no, no. And she just starts just wailing and crying. Uh, it can't be. It can't be. <laughs> and she just starts crying. Well, that's awkward. Um, I'm so there sorry. Go, um... We, she, you know, unfortunately, there was nothing we can do. She, she had passed before we got here. Um, but would you like me to, to give her the last rites for you? She's just okay. She's she she she's just balling. I'm gonna go ahead and do such. Okay. I say very sorry for your loss as I investigate how Daphne died. Uh, make an investigation check. I've got you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, as as Dryden walks up behind her and just places a hand o- over her shoulder, like a large, massive half orc and hand over her shoulder. Uh, <laughs> this is what it looks like. <laughs> just... <laughs> <laughs> she actually turns. She actually turns in. She actually turns in and kind of like presses her bo- like presses her face and her body against your chest and actually it ends up crying, like using her shoulder to cry to cry on. Go on. No, that's that's what happened. That's it. <laughs> She's in mourning, goddammit. <laughs> um Ron <laughs> Can't even look at Blue's face right now. Um Brontor. Yeah. You I'm notice here. That <laughs> okay, go, go. I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. Notice that uh, there are um, uh, there is a that her throat has been slashed. Um, and you also notice that there are uh, chunks of her skin uh that are missing. Um, 
uh, as you look at the as you look at where the different chunks are, you notice that there's two different um, form of teeth marks. There's what you would think would be rats, but something else that looks more like a humanoid mouth, very pointed, long, daggerish type teeth. It's kind of what you notice. Mm. All right, I walk up to this bastard of a goblin. And I was like, "Did you bite her?" He's, did you bite he's her? passed out. Oh, he's passed out. Damn. Um, wake up, I, damn you! Let's see if I can do anything to wake him up without wasting a spell on his ass. And he's all tied up now, right? Yeah, he's all tied up. Um, I'm going to. Th- I don't know. Oh, uh, flatulation. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, roll for it. Roll for the flatulation. I'm doing it. I'm rolling a. Tw- I'm rolling a d20 for her flatulation. Did it land? Oh, oh no! All right. How do you want to do this? <laughs> um, I'm gonna do um. <laughs> make my voice super super loud oh, um, right next to him and just be like wake up you cunt <laughs> whoa, whoa. It, damn. Damn. whoa. It's like, it's like, I have like known Rams words. for a long time <laughs> now a, and she I has never a temper, Jessica. Jessica make a uh, make a uh, no not at this point yet um, it's super loud and it catches all of the rest of you off guard he goes what the looks down his like and there's like he's just in pain at that point again he's and he remembers it, it like it hasn't subsided he's like ah! okay he looks up mm-hmm. at you and just is foaming at the mouth does anyone I'll speak this language finger and stab it in the bullet hole in his thigh oh my god oh yeah. yes oh, no! <laughs> Again, I say, you've got like, some information. He's got one HP that could push him over. <laughs> what? What do you want? I, I have to know. Take Um. By our count, there's two more people that we're looking for. Where are they? Wow! All Done. right, I respect that. Food. They you ate eating. them? Food, eh? Uh, look up at Jessica and I say, well, sucks for the other two, I guess. Um, I don't Let's believe him. Out. So I go to him before I do any sort of truth spells, which I have, by the way. Um, I'm going to try to convince him I'm a healer. I can get you out of this pain. You've got to be truthful to us. Make a persuasion check. Other, where are the other two? Okay. Make persuasion check. Uh, boop. Ugh. Perceived. I told you. We ate them. They filled our bellies. I use my hammer on his head. No, no, no. no. I stop oh, him. God. I run up and I grab it. I grab the <laughs> hammer. Um, Brontor and Dryden make de- ma- Brontor and Dryden make uh, <laughs> initiative checks. Initiative? I'm not fighting him. You're this always is, fighting. No, this is, uh, what'd you this get? Is to see who gets it? Who gets theirs first? Who gets there first? You said nine, Cody. Yeah. Yeah, twelve. All right. So, uh, so Dryden, you. You you see you see um Brontor getting ready to just swing as uh as soon as that is said and you're you already like you've already left um you've already left the lady behind and you're just boom and you Which grab takes the war a lot, by he, the way like, I'd like to point out back mid swing boom <laughs> <laughs> you're just holding it there right now um right. I'm I'm holding it up I look Brontor straight in the eyes and say. Let's get what we need from him, or maybe we feed him to the pudding. He's not giving us any information. Or maybe oh, we feed him, to, feed the him to the pudding. Oh, damn. That's brutal. Yeah. I, I would like to see how he lasts with the pudding. <laughs> I second the notion of That's the pudding. a good idea. <laughs> All right, like so. That. To the pudding. Just like the, you said. Hark. You said if I told you the truth. Okay. Stop the pain. All right. I will do that then, because I am a, I'm a woman of my word. 
That is um, one way to stop the pain. Pudding does wonders for you. <laughs> yeah. I, I will stop the pain. Um, I'm, I'm going to show, show you two objects first, and the, uh, you're going to, again, speak truthfully. Um, do you know? pain, and I'll tell you what you want to know. Uh, can I right. can, can I put him in a full Nelson before she heals him? He's already hogtied gonna, at this point. Oh, he's I'm already hogtied. Heal, I'm not going to heal him. Like I don't want to heal him because then he's going to like pop back to life and kill me. Um, I am going to go ahead and do my last second second level spell and do calm emotions on him so he shuts the fuck up. Okay. Oh. Whew. Rolls a natural 20. Oh. Plus, since it's with disadvantage because he's in such severe pain at one hit point. Rolls a 10. Which I believe uh, is your DC, so he makes your he saves it against okay. it. Okay. Fuck. Um, Wait, no, her, her DC is eleven. Oh no, her DC is eleven. That is eleven. Uh, it's a con save, is that right? No. Yep. A, oh, con save of goblins. What do goblins have with con? Yeah, it's a ten. So no, he fails. So as he is still in pain, writhing, he uh, just kind of settles back into a kind of more calm, calm state. Maybe. Stops writhing, but you still see like blood, like not gushing, but like pooling and coming out of his wounds at this point. Okay. So are um, you going unconscious? Not yet. He's he's close, but he's getting there. But he's just kind of he's, 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 kind of, he's kind of like dozing. He's kind of like dozing at this point. Hey, heart friend. Um, Keep him awake. There's there's someone that that used that lives here. It could have been you. Um, that left a couple of things behind. Are these yours? And uh, she shows. And the, I think I probably have the scroll and someone else has the box. I've yeah. got the engraved with, uh, um, what's the, uh, um, you got oh, the box. yeah, I've got the box. Uh, I, I the forgot scroll. to write down what the, the God was. Oh, so, uh, Sylvanus. That's what no, I, nope, nope. You have a, um, you have a. Uh, Tom, you have a uh, you have a holy symbol of Sylvanas, um, and Jessica, you have the wooden box because it had oh. a, it had the thing of vomit on it. That's right. Okay, so I, I show yeah. him the box and and I don't know who I don't know who has the scroll. I have the scroll. Grantor has it. I actually wrote that down. Yeah. All right. Uh, does, are these yours? No. Not okay. Mine. Do you sure. do you know who who owns these? Some priest gave them to us as payment. Well, uh, where? As he crossed through our hills. What What did the priest look like? Was he a uh, goblin too? No. Human. Human priest. Brown hair. Striking silver eyes. Bronto, a friend of yours? Said, I don't know. Said box was very valuable. Relic of ages past. Would only open for those who are worthy. Okay, well, um, I'm just going to do a little touch in here and there. And um, she does the last rites on him and sort of looks at the boys and kind of backs away. Oh, uh, it's go time. Can I finish him now? To the pudding! To the, to the pudding. pudding! To the pudding! So wait a minute, do we each grab a limb? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> as, as you... <laughs> so as you... As you are all... Oh my god. For the, oh my... Oh. We can't fight the, the pudding, by the way. Why are we going to this giant... Okay. No, so, we just have to throw him in there. He's calmed right now. He can't move, and his legs blown to shit. So as so. Uh, um, so as uh, as Je after Jessica finishes touching him and doing the last rites, she you all like it just kind of as a crowd, you all just pick him up and just like throw him up over your heads and very kind of like boop 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 style, just kind of like all walk him <laughs> all throughout the cave cavern over to the pudding over to the uh, where the black pudding is. You oh. stop just outside yeah. of its range and. One, two, three. Everyone make a strength check. Let's do fire arrow for style. I'm just, I'm just going to hang out oh, here in comfort. Lady. 20! <laughs> Damn. Yeah. The halfling. 
Really what it is is that check is for me holding him in the air because you guys are basically suspending him as I'm sitting there just like swaying along. <laughs> no, no. The rest of them are sus- no, no, the, no, the rest of them are suspending him. You're you're holding on to him and <laughs> your legs are just like your legs are just like in the air as they, <laughs> as they have actually lifted you off the ground. <laughs> to the pudding. <laughs> to the pudding. There's oh the name God. of the, there's the name of the episode, folks. <laughs> um, one, one, two, three. You all throw him in. You all throw Hark, uh, still hogtied, at the uh, at the stalagmite end. As he as his body hits the stalagmite and plops to the ground, you see once again the large, uh, just puddle like uh, puddle like um, uh, black liquid just rise up and converge splashing all over him their acid just starts burning and the smell of like melting flesh starts to fill your nostrils as all of a sudden that's a, as you see as the put as you see as the black liquid uh converges over his arms over the, his middle torso and ends up going into his throat as he begins choking <laughs> And just eventually his form is just enveloped, inspired by the pudding. It then back into the stalagmites. No remnants of Hark anywhere. I give Brontor a high five as we as I walk away. Brian starts to feel kind of shitty about himself. But walks over <laughs> and gi- but walks over and gives Tom a high five, a low five. <laughs> <laughs> One of the coolest things I've seen in a while, boys. Well done. Um. All right. I say we t- head back to the village. There's then. another. T- there's another tunnel. Yeah, we I thought that was another tunnel. Wait. There, wait. Oh yeah. No, we went to the top tunnel, right? There's two of them though. There's, there's a, a bottom. bottom tunnel. Yeah. There's one down here. Oh. Yeah. All right. So, well, Let's we don't have guys, we're here. We don't have anyone else to take our lady friend back. But the exploration oh, yeah. for the sake of brevity of this and, exp- and making this a little faster you spend the next uh, about uh, 30 40 minutes exploring that area of the cave you find what appear to be sleeping mats you find what appear to be um dried and uh gnawed ch- upon and chewed upon uh remains of what appear to be either humans dwarves or a few other individ a few other individuals um uh nothing uh, in partic- nothing super in particular really catches your eye. This seems to kind of be the more sleeping area for some of the goblins that you guys killed earlier, as well as um, the disposal area of what other what other bones um, and unfortunate victims there were to this goblin infestation. Is that where you find the last two that Hark was talking about? Uh, you don't know. You just find a ton of bones. Mm. Um. So, yeah, our lady friend needs, needs an escort, guys. Um, I say we take her back. I mean, this is, we, we got what we, as far as we could with the four people. I agree. I, I mean, so. I would let Jessica Time do the last out. rites for those who weren't able to make it there, we couldn't get. And then I say we get out of here. All right. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So, Jessica ministers last rites to the bone pile. Um, are you guys taking the other dead body with you of, uh, of uh, Diana? Yes, or, absolutely. Okay. I'll throw her okay. over my shoulder. Oh my god! All right, all right. So Reverend, as uh, reverently, reverently, reverently. So as, but I mean, I'm the big one that carries things. I'm not trying to be a dick. So <laughs> ironic. So what a dong in one and hand you, and a woman in the I, other. I, I, I also, <laughs> I also take the rope. I tie the, uh, I tie my ogre canine to the rope. I tie the rope around my waist. Stab the dagger canine into the dongus, and that way it drags behind me. This is yeah, this, is D&D, dongus, don- this is the D and D. This is the D and D girl. <laughs> I've got, I've got the dongus. I've got the girl. I'm pretty much set here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You make your way back. You make your way back to Nightstone. Oh, Christ. Um, over the course of the next two hours, uh, you, you reach Nightstone about midday at this point. Um, you end up reaching Nightstone about midday, and uh, you find it to be fairly fairly busy. Actually, you find it to be um, 
uh, you find uh, village people uh, actually wandering around. Um, continuing. people? Yes, you find the village people. Uh, <laughs> people. <laughs> <laughs> I can't! I can't! <laughs> 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 young man, it's a good to be down to say, young man. Don't do it. Oh, man. Oh, oh my God. Oh, 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 it's a raid. Welcome, raiders. Um, hey, raiders. Anyways, you find you find all of the different villagers uh, <laughs> wandering around the town. Oh. Uh, some are doing their best, uh, as well as you also find uh, some of the Zentarium um, helping out as well, uh, helping to remove the boulders from different areas of this town. Um, you see uh, a few of them, uh, including Morak, and, and including Morak and. Um, in particular, uh, working on fixing uh, his inn and working on fixing the large gaping hole that is uh, currently um, uh, currently uh, is currently you know in the top of the roof. Um, he looks down at you. He looks down at all of you and says, "Oh, so glad that you so glad that you could come on back. Uh, glad you could come on back to us. Um, could use some help. It's been a uh, it's been quite some it's been quite some time actually, and it's uh it's been some time. And obviously, you can see our town is in Quite a problem. Although you do look oh at that point he notices the um the dead woman over your shoulder and says Oh, you you brought her back. Thank you. Um the chapel's probably going to be the best place to keep her until we can arrange for arrange for a proper uh, arrange for a proper funeral. Um yes. Uh once you've done that, come on inside. We'll we'll have a chat, and we'll have a chat. Okay, let's go in. All right. I could use a drink. So yeah, you, uh, use you, um, it's nice you drop- to see you again, Marky Mark. Marky Mark's back. We've, Marky missed, Mark. we've missed Marky Mark this whole time. Yes. I'm glad you yeah. guys. I'm glad you got these villagers back to the town. I'm so glad to see the funky bunch again. <laughs> As as you're as as you're all calling him Marky Marky, he's like, the name's Modak, actually. Oh, yeah, I'm Marky. Uh, oh, Marky. I know your tricks, Marky. Classic Marky Mark. So uh, he he walks behind. Um, he actually walks behind the. Uh, he walks behind the um, bar after you guys have uh, placed um, Diana in the uh, in the chapel. And um, uh, I, I, you can you you find that he's actually that he actually was uh, he was actually hiding some some alcohol, and he's actually managed to put two large casks of uh, what appear to be ale or wine um, currently on the back shelf of the tavern, um, where uh, where there is um, uh, where there is uh, where the where the alcohol normally normally sits, and he pours you all. Um, he pours you all a large stein of either the ale or the wine, depending on what you want. Um, ale wine mix, or ale wine mix if you prefer. <laughs> Somebody kill me. Um, <laughs> you, uh, he sits you down. Would that, and says, would that be called whale? <laughs> <laughs> or Wix? <laughs> like whale better. <laughs> so it seems like you've just done do it. So it seems like you've done us quite a service, helping our, helping our small and humble village manage to start getting back on its feet and saving us from those terrible gob- those terrible goblins, as well as uh, as well as uh, ogres and rats and orcs. I think yes, he, yeah. yes, as well as bringing back, as well bringing back some of our dead to us as well. Um, we don't have much, but we were able to scrounge together approximately uh. 1500 gold pieces to pay you for helping us and for uh, ridding ridding this area of the goblin the goblin threat and the goblin problem um score i i assume we split those evenly guys yeah sounds good 
he looks at you and says, "It's it's however you want it. it it's however you want to uh, divide divide it up. You can either have it all to yourself. You can. If, it seems like you're a very capable group of adventurers around there, and we'll be able to uh, may put it in a party fund or something. Some like to do that." Um, Jessica gives uh, 150 of her 300 back and says, um, "It looks like y'all are going to have a lot of rebuilding to do. Um, please, uh, you know, take care of your dad, um, and, and please continue to live." He looks at it and says, oh, "Thank you, thank you very much." And he kind of pockets pockets it um, and make sure this gets redistributed among the uh, among the villagers as proper. Um, I hate to ask this, but we had a few, we had quite a few actually die in the in in the giant attack. Um, names are still coming in on who all has survived and who hasn't. But one of my uh, one of my close friends, her name was uh, Samil Southwater Southwell. She was a uh, she was killed during the she was killed during the dragon attack. She has no family here in Nightstone, but she often spoke of her brother. Uh, often spoke of her brother who lived up in uh, Brian Chander. Uh, Markham, Markham was his name. Uh, he he's a sheriff up in Brian Chander, and. It's 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 really far it's it's pretty far north, but if you would do me the honor and do me the privilege of being able to actually deliver him the message that his sister has died and that she is uh, she is buried here in in the town of Nightstone, I would be eternally grateful and be willing to pay you the be able to be willing to pay you the lump sum of I mean, actually uh, it says I don't have much. 400 gold pieces, but also throw in a cask of ale to aid you on your journey. Um, guys, that's, that's going to be up to you guys. Um, it, as much as I like to, to would like to do that, if it, there's people that act, that need our, our help, um, it, you know, lives in danger. Is this place past? Um, <clears throat> what was it? Waterdeep, the first, the first city. Oh, it's uh, it's quite past Waterdeep. It's actually up in the. Uh, it's actually very far north. It's up in the. It's up in the. Uh, uh, it's up past. It's actually much past Waterdeep. Um, you end up having to. You have to traverse most of the Sword Coast in order to get there. But is it in the uh, same direction? Like we go through Waterdeep, kind of make our way up there. Uh, you would. Uh, you'd probably end up wanting to take. Probably wanting to take the long road to actually get there. You could possibly also take the. Uh, you could take the high road. That could also work. Um, follow that along the co- Sword Coast. You're going to end up having to pass through the spine of the world to, end, to get to Brian Chanda, but it's up by Icewind Dale. That's it's going to be the cl- place that you're wanting to head to. So we don't go through Waterdeep on the way there. Uh, Waterdeep's on the way. Oh, Waterdeep's right, on so. the way. You'll you'll pass through that. You'll definitely pass by. Mm. Oh, then yeah, sure, no problem. We'll take your message. Yeah. Wonderful. Um. um any any sort of token you want to know it's it's done we can send a raven bird i don't know if you could if you could uh if you could find a magician and tell if you could find a magician and tell them to contact uh, tell them to contact tell them to contact grind her and nightstone um they'll be able to get they'll be able to get the message they'll be able to get the message to us okay grind and nightstorm you said grind in nightstone Thank you. Um, All right. Can we uh, hang out and, and sort of rest up in your inn? Do you mind ab- ab- this absolutely. Up? And since you've done so much to help the inn, since you've done so much to help the town of Nightstone, I'll even allow you to stay here the evening for free. And Ooh. Bought drinks. Oh, the drinks are the drinks are on the house tonight. I think we all Huzzah! party. I think we all, I think we all deserve a. I think we all deserve a. Uh, Quite a good night of just drinking and remembering those who have those who have passed on. Okay. Uh, with so. the uh, villagers back in town, is there a uh, blacksmith? Um, at this point, you don't like you find a place that you that does act as a blacksmithy. Um, unfortunately, the the blacksmith is uh, kind of too busy repairing at this point. 
um, to re- like he's trying to put his forge back in order um, and uh, trying to remove a giant stone that currently seems to have crushed the uh, the main um, heating uh, chimney that he has uh, or the main heating forge that he had. And Is our, it's going to take a little bit of time for him to, re- for, to rebuild that. Are okay. Zentarium friends still around? Oh, yeah, they're uh, they're helping out. Um, you see uh, Kella. You see Kella still helping out. You see um, uh, Zimzam. Zimzam, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You see uh, <laughs> Zolkin. You see Zolkin, also helping him out. Also helping out as well. Um, <clears throat> Uh, they they seem to be actually helping. They actually seem to be doing a lot of good and actually helping out the town surprisingly. Um, the only thing, uh, so a quick timeout. So we got the fifteen hundred. Mm-hmm. Did we take the four hundred in the ale? I think you guys have to have that discussion. Is what I've heard. Yeah, because we did. I don't think we decided because you mentioned not taking it right. Oh, if we can make it through Waterdeep, because, you know, we have pre- more pressing matters to get to Waterdeep and, and sort of um, do some things there. So I figured I'll that the, would have yeah. been. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm totally down to to do this. It's another place to go to help. Um, okay. And, and, I'm just, as, as long as we can make it to Waterdeep first. Okay. And then um, as a side for me, I'd like, is, is there like a, like a general good shop? here in town where I might be able to go see if they know what the vial and the stone was that I got. Um, you managed to find, uh, make an investigation check just to see. Okay. Cause I'm still the only one that knows. Right. Nice. Well, that's not happening. Oh. <laughs> you spent the better part of an hour asking around the town and nobody really has any idea what it is. Like you, they they kind of show you, and they're a little bit too put off by your smell. Yeah, okay. that'll happen. So, okay. as the night uh, comes uh, comes to a uh, as the night comes to a close, the um, and as the day as the day you guys you spend your time helping to repair the town as best as you can, and as best as possible. Um, eventually, uh, you find yourself uh, you find yourselves. Um, just enjoying a nice glass of ale uh, uh, in the village, in the village town of Nightstones Inn. Um, enjoy some drink. Um, Jessica, I need you to make a uh, religion check. You are super good. muted. <laughs> so, yeah. whatever she did. She rolled a six. Okay. So Jessica, you uh, you spent some time um, kind of up in your room, um, uh, just meditating over all that has happened, all that you've done, all that you've all the good all the good that you've brought, all the help that you've done. Um, you pull out the box of Bahamut again and kind of just meditate on looking over that. Um, you flip it around, you kind of look under, look on the underside, you try to figure out the script and the scrolling as you are, it continues to move and, um, continues to move and go. It's been about, uh, 30 minutes doing this before the script stops moving and solidifies. Um, as you glance over it, as you glance over it, you notice that, uh, what are the, um, what are the languages you speak? You're still muted. When did I become muted? That was weird. What are the um, uh, languages you speak? Draconic and com- common. Okay. Surprisingly, you do notice this one is in Draconic. Um, and as you read over the script, it takes you a few tries and a few minutes to, re- to kind of figure out where it starts and where it ends. But eventually you f- pretty much decode something that reads along these lines. From those who are connected by but a single thread to the individual with the goal of happiness and joy to spread. Through the friendship and happiness that you show to others, your kindness has not gone unnoticed by your sisters and your brothers. Get ready for a journey that you will embark on soon. Crack this box and take this boon. 
as you as the as you finish reading that and the script has finished getting solidified, the script begins to move faster and faster again, this time going all around the box. And you see that the words that were originally painted in this very beautiful black script are now shining in this platinum, beautiful radiant color as they begin to actually expand off of the box, expand in a circle off the box. And they just keep doing this huge like helix around the box. It keeps getting wider and wider. You holding the box can't actually let go until eventually this large helix of what just looks like silver thread and um is going is completely going all around you 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 cannot let go you can't let go of this box but as you do you as you look down at it um you see a slight crack appear along the top of it and a lid that was not there before opens up the lights fade and come down leaving the room kind of very, not very dim, but ba- kind of back to its normal lighting. Just, it seems dim now that the lighting, that the platinum lighting has now no longer there. You find in it what appears to be approximately 152 gold pieces, as well as 10 silver pieces on top of that. You also find buried within the box a necklace that has the that has like a that has like a very odd little symbol on the end of it. it looks kind of like a radiant star um that has kind of like a radiant star on it as well as what appears to be um a large um a large fist attached to it uh that's like it that's in the middle of that radiant star um that's what you find in that box Okay. Um, I like to see if if I if I know where this fist and star come from, because uh, I know the box is Bahamut, but the fist and star seem a little bit unique for Bahamut. <laughs> I I feel feel like I have something that might help. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna put something in chat real quick. Okay. What the? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? It's a little thing we've been working on. Oh my god. Oh my god, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little project we've been working on. Possibly. <laughs> a little bit. It's going to be enough to cover the trip and some other stuff that's been going on. Y'all are too much. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, uh, this is the project that we've been working on here for uh, the last couple weeks. I mean, if that's okay with you, is that okay with you? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we can, we can find another use for it if you would rather. Um... <laughs> Ugh, guys, you are the best. <laughs> and there was like there was a moment, um I think it was uh Friday night where uh the three of us, me and the shadows, were gaming and you got really upset that we were talking about Guardian Con and there was a little bit of a moment where I, I whispered Shadow and said I, I feel bad that we're upsetting her, but I can't wait. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, in case anyone's on mobile or something and can't click the link, we've been saving, uh, collecting money, and uh, we've, we've raised the money so that um, Rams, Jessica, can come to Guardian Con, the Destiny convention in Tampa, uh, where all six of us will once for the first time ever be in the same room and can do a live session of the riot sessions. It's going to be a lot. You guys are the best community in the whole world, the best friends someone could ask for. 
oh my god, this is going to be a blast. <laughs> it's be a lot of fun. I, I, I hope it all works out, and I just want to put as a footnote, if it doesn't, if something comes up and it doesn't work out, this is still your money to do what you need to do. So I'm going to go to Guardian Con. I'm going to see you guys there, and we're going to have the time of our lives. <laughs> so fun. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> I wish I could hug you right now. <laughs> You'll get a chance. No, no, I That's the whole point. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Tom. Damn it, Tom. <laughs> oh my god. From oh. those who are connected by but a single thread to the individuals with goals of happiness to spread through the friendship and happiness that you show to others, your kindness has not gone unnoticed by your sisters and your brothers. Get ready for a journey that you will embark on soon. Crack this box and take this boon. <laughs> I'm already <laughs> Oh Looking forward to Guardian Con. Oh, God, yeah. So, uh, guys, that's how we're ending tonight's riot session. Um, uh, I, I, oh, God. The, the generosity that all of you showed, um, the fact that we have so many people dropping by and hanging out, um, and just the fact that Blue and the community of the community within that, like, we have been able to build just amongst, like, all of our channels and just amongst all of us here. Um, it, it's a, it speaks volumes, guys, and you guys are, you guys blow us away every week. So, um, we're gonna end tonight's session with that. Um, we'll be back next Sunday, back on my channel. Um, and uh, and I'll be hosting it. So, if for some reason you're not following Shadow Hack or anyone else here, and you end up back at this channel, you'll be able to link over there and make sure you follow him at that point. But I put his link in chat, so follow Shadow Hack. He 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 runs this show. He, this is just an outreach. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll be back over there next week, and uh, we'll be continuing where we left off as our group continues. Uh, hopefully, they'll figure out. Hopefully, they can start figuring out a name for themselves, or hopefully, they uh, can he- start heading back in the direction of Waterdeep and see where adventurers lie, where their next adventure lies, guys. Um, thank you for hanging out tonight. Uh, Blue, since you're running stream tonight, where do you wanna where do you wanna send the love? Oh man, I haven't even put. I've been thinking about this moment that we just had for <laughs> about are eight sneaky. days. Sneaky, uh, sneaky. Uh, I, I, for the for for un, uh, for people who aren't normally here, I had to do a 24 hour stream where a lot of the donations for this took place, and she was around for a lot of it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> it was not easy to keep this a secret. I, I thought, um, I thought Blue's secret was he's getting on a sex change. Yep, <laughs> that was the joke. That was the joke. Uh, hey, Eric is on. He's doing our drawings. Oh, oh he nice. is? What's his... What's his, what's his uh, Eric, uh, Eric, it's E-R-Y-C-K-W-E-B-B. Oh, yeah, Eric Webb. Sweet. So, I like it. Nice. Do we want to do a riot yeah, raid? A riot raid? Yeah. We want to yeah. do a riot raid? Let's do it. Uh, this is the guy. He's drawing us some sketches of our characters. We're, we're gonna run a riot raid, guys. Let's do it. Um, but thanks so much for coming by. And uh, yeah, guys, think that yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, guys. All right, guys. Adios. Love you guys. Right, guys. <laughs> Bye. See you next week, guys.